P2 is already going to be done and does it hard to break that point. Mothman, and I believe Nemo called that out, and now we're looking to the side as you as you do see Bob already set up onto this new time here. Yeah, Mothman out there trying to take to Mothman, he's trying to play his life here. Is able to spawn one out top, does have to kill a bridge, and Birdie is looking to fill that spike, that space. Diva able to get that one, catch the crown, gets that trade as well, able to get the two, and now we almost have 20 ish seconds to get towards this new Birdie is set up beautifully here, is able to get one, is he able to get two? On to ready, but Bob again not falling on the side of RIT. He able to get uh, some points back in favor of RIT there as rotations. RIT there as rotations are now going to come through onto the new point. And this is going to be a really big hole that Steve do catch him off guard. Relic though needs to go big here onto Nemo. Is are going to unload on the members of RIT. The rotation is already going to come through onto this new point. Though trying to get some sort of rotations, able to get one on bridge, potentially getting that second one, gets the second. Oh, getting two there, that is huge. Nemo and Faded Crown, two huge factors in that hard point. Mock plant down, but really has nowhere to go to get to this bomb. 12 seconds. Man, super low, needs to play his life. And the timing was immaculate. Don't Given they can start potentially pushing out towards the area. Is it able to get plant here coming through from Birdie trying to get the time but Reddy is able to respond respond oh, huge pick of, uh, for RIT there Birdie going down Mossman and Relic the last going down Mossman and Relic the last two alive Bob going down though huge pick on the snap for Shenandoah and the comeback for RIT is going to be phenomenal as is able to get that able to spot him out from Red does not get that pick though Mossman Ooh, you have the look onto that A side if you can get the kill here that would be huge the bomb is now in they are starting to try and do it, and Relic able to get that, and now it's Bob left in a 1v4 from Relic as we saw there, just, and that would have been too crazy timing if Bob looked the correct direction. Yep, you're on that propane, like you said, on that helicopter pad, Hi having this high ground is something, this high ground is something huge, Steve-O already out of the gate, finding the, a huge pick onto Bob. Sites under control for the side of RIT. Yeah, RIT splitting the sites right now, Red Nemo, Relic pushing in, getting them off of this A site, but B is going to be secured. Really, two members onto this A site, Ready uh, and Nemo, Faded Crown, and well, Birdie with the flank, but answered back by Faded Crown, being able to pick up the kill there, huge pick up Nemo, 10 and 5 right now for RIT, possibly being able to get off that platform, however, getting back now onto these AC units, playing very aggressive, uh, finding Bob in the meantime is huge, the nade will find Faded Crown as well, but ready to stay alive, Bob though, able to get Birdie, Mossman able to just play his life, unfortunately does fall distance there onto Faded Crown, keeping them off of this site. Yeah, we see Birdie trying to just the crown is able to spot one going out of blue Stevo is able to get these shots initial able to get that trade onto Moss Man. Stevo is trying to get that he spawn. They do have to control all these green fences, but B site is looking to get he will kill Bob, and this might be what Shenandoah was looking for. Faded Crown is on the site. Onto this A site as well. They're splitting time here. Two on B, one right now on A. Get this last tick. This is huge right now. Trades coming across the board. 12 favors here now of RIT. The trades coming through. Ready, getting a two for the kill. Yeah, Mossman is in a really nice spot. Of course, he does get timing. Oh, and, and a four uh, man commit pushing into this bottom side of this site here point here and really the spawns being as far out as they are it's gonna be hard <gasps> for able to win that fight keeping possession in RIT's favor uh, at crown Nemo trying to answer back onto relic and, and really a back and forth point here from both sides but Verdi holding this angle strong Nemo able to get that long range kill onto relic able to pick up one but ready able to answer back on the side of RIT Steve already recognizes this Steve just getting him super aggressive Verdi though able to cover fire for Steve but here Verdi and Nemo Steve -O, able to pick up the kill onto Nemo that is huge uh, from RIT by SU here. Steve-O jumping down, able to find one, possibly. <laughs> for that side of RIT as already is in that maze window and Mossman, pick and Mossman picks it up and gets 25 seconds potentially on this last hill. And for this new hill, like you said, you can see the, the angle that Nemo is trying to online for Shenandoah as Mossman has one. Birdie though getting really aggressive towards this ramp side. Crown is able to get this kill. That's It'll it. be game That's if he slides it. in. If he can oh get him ready, God, he's able Steve to do so. Steve-O gets that and D-Boogie is able to get the trade, but Steve-O gets a nice two. D-Boogie is up and 
full control right now on this P1 hardpoint map uh, for Shenandoah. Pretty is trying to help out Steve -O, just playing his life as best as he can. Yeah, Steve -O, able to get that good full and full control over this P number two here for SU and, and flicking Brody falling, but Mossman able to answer back. Steve -O oh. ha has to go huge here. Get and uh, we do see. Jetty clearing off that old and is going to be pinching. I'm not too sure. Oh, not a good sign for Shenandoah, but if they can get these trophies down, like you said, oh. well, looking in a good position. <laughs> Flank opportunity here with Verdi on this spawn, possibly able to get something back. But JM2 as Jetty picks up Steve and now they're just looking for their rotation. Verdi, though, able to pick up, so, but unable to do anything with it. Verdi needs to go huge, but the Boogie is going to slice oh. him. Relic does go down to the Boogie. Mossman gets good for one. Good for Good for two! Mossman performing massive! Needs to get this third! Gets his! Just kind of stay down. Mossman, though, does get traded out for Jayhem. And Verdi goes! Kind of pushing towards his A site. Will Verdi find contact here? D Boogie is able to get that early to go defuse shortly here. If he doesn't get a kill, being able to pick up one would be huge for SU. Yeah, Verdi is in a super aggressive position and is able to get just absolutely not aware of Verdi. I, I don't know what he was thinking. Like, hey! Steve O holding down the four. Yeah, and we see Steve-O just playing his life, getting one onto Jetty. Now we see Relic sees the guy from coming down here. Relic now holding this angle for the side of S2. Knows exactly where he is, able to pick up, pick up that frag there. Huge 2v1 situation now. Mossman holding this angle, man able to dunk, uh, duck behind that car there. Finding the angle. Two and Don Julio starting to heat up as Verdi and Relic are just trying to- Steve-O has to play patient here. He, they know where the bomb is. They have it uh, kind of near this dark. Really, this is a toss up. Yeah, my heart's beating out of my chest as Mossman being able to pick up that push towards their spawns, maybe get some spawn kills. Do you see Jayhem posted up in this middle area as Verdi picked up Steve-O as Mossman gets one. Now it's a 2v2 situation. Mossman able to the boogie, able to get that flank. Steve-O spraying through the luggage there, able to pick oh. up a kill. Mossman turning around, now getting aggressive, trying to get into that site, but Jayhem able to pick up. You see Rutgers now going fast, trying to hit aggressive towards our spawn as Jayhem able to win that gunfight against Mossman. Steve, however, on a huge flank. Possibly Jayhem is aware of what was happening, and Relic does get the big pick on Julio. Now is a 1v1 on the B site as A is also getting captured. Mossman being able to get the big pick and a nice pinch set up for that A site. But to Boogie and Rahu Don Rahulio able to find Verdi and Relic Steve room for Shenandoah. Yeah, Verdi getting those two picks is going to be huge. Jayhem as well dropping to Verdi three to the to his name. Steve -O able to find Don Rahulio will fall. However, Don Rahulio getting up a huge pick for the side of Rutgers. Yeah, and we see Relic Rahulio Jayhem able to answer back. However, Steve -O getting Jayhem D Boogie Boogie falling as well. Huge picks, but Jayhem, as I say that, answering back. Verdi and Steve-O dying. Relic trying to find the answers. Oh, will find Relic. the two-piece. Jayhem and Jetty hold sight. Jetty trying to play life there. Steve-O trying to find this angle and oh, will Verdi. be able to. Relic goes down to Jayhem and starting it off a little bit hot as we do see the side of Rutgers getting that and do, but do they recognize that Jetty is spawned on this dude? They do and mop out. Yeah, Mossman having that angle on what would be the B side if you were doing search and destroy. I'm getting that big pick onto Relic and D Boogie, getting Mossman as well. Steve -O, though, it would come out from the side of Shenandoah. Yeah, Don Rahulio and D Boogie are going to stay on that. Might come in. And, and now, first access is going to be here by oh, Rutgers. Mossman is plus uh, for this UP4. I mean, this is going to just be really good for the side of Shenandoah. Who there? Steve -O getting. Jayhem as well. A huge hold there. Possibly there. Possibly Steve-O getting that kill again on Don Rahulio there. Relic in a firefight of a spin will fall to Jayhem, but oh Steve-O is going to answer back on fire right now. Can I clear him out, but they don't see it. And they do have that trophy of Jayhem. Does recognize it. Does go down. It does get another. He's running through them. Rotating back onto this P1. Verdi will be dropped by the boogie. Super devastating for the Shy Shine Doe. I mean, they. Consistently had some pretty nice plays, nice plays, but we do see Verdi, Stevo, and Relic getting to as Relic take any cutoffs, any cutoff angles as Mossman pushing into that DVD gets the on the side of Rutgers. You're looking for these picks, looking for these angles. Mossman killing his own member there. Stevo dropping Verdi and Mossman oh trying God. to answer back too. Will to do so. Don Rahulio just barely escaping with his life there. Stevo trying to push his way in. Yeah, Shenandoah now down about 70 points here. Rutgers can.
will be killed by Verdi there. Uh, and really no one on this point, no one able to get these ticks to him, but Jayhem and Dibugi are just closing the door. Oh my God, Stevo getting a massive two piece, trying to just stay alive, gets a third, almost gets a fourth. Stevo is feeling super hot right now. Get point gap. Yeah, and we can really see these rotations come out as Verdi just needs to play his life goes out. Yeah, Shenandoah has to have a good hold here on this P1. Something like Julio is alive, but there is that pinch. SU can win off this point here. Grave, ready to get Shenandoah back on the attack. Yeah, Big Murph looking for a Mango. clear there. Mango Woo! off the corner there. <laughs> that quick answer back for Arcadia off of that back wall there. Just unable to reach it on Shenandoah's side. Uh, good play there from Arcadia to even up this score. Have, right? I, I mean, Big Murph all the way getting that flip reset. Just perfectly executed there from Arcadia. You, you can't be mad about that if yeah. you're the horn there to deal the final blow. Yeah, Arcadia kind of gets a little loss of where this yeah. ball is going to land, and Kiazi track. So impressed with the offensive pressure <laughs> that we are seeing from this team today. Yeah, I mean, Mango and Elim really able to make that one happen. Mango getting uh, that. Mango to seal the deal. Look at that. The demolition saw the defender coming slightly diverse. Beautifully, Mango just not in the right position, not expecting that turn. Phew. Oh my goodness. Look at the way that this is set up. We nearly went two games in Watch this goal, too. That was a laser from Mango. Just spins straight into the next. And you'll see what happened there is Eliminate had the original push. Kiazi, three. Yeah, I mean, Big Murph and Space Fear there, both able to find these angles. Elim gets the three of their goals here. Yeah, another huge demo there coming through from Beer Farm, setting up Big Murph. They are close to impossible for the Hornets to come back from. Yeah, with 38 seconds left here in game number three, definitely hard to get. To slip away even further. Just pass up to Beer Farm. Mango thought that he could get it. Just didn't have quite the support. Kiazi had it in the sights. And, uh, it, like, it's just a hair. It takes yeah. so fence rotations and vice versa so far. But that one caught them off guard. Yeah, Elim just... That's their first goal in nine minutes of yeah. gameplay. Up, that Arcadia will fly right over your head. Reclaiming the lead within this series. Shenandoah now are on the back. To survive a King Kong Cotton will drop uh, two Tracer there. The ultimate coming through, getting huge kicks on the back line of Shenandoah. Ben again, the last to fall in that exchange. They guarantee themselves in overtime. Ben rolling on through and right on out just as quick now. And by the time that Shenandoah will be back into the fight, Lynn's characters move so quickly that they're going to be ready for a full five battle. And this time, with an extra cherry on top with these ultimate supports. With a composition where, like Lynn are running, it doesn't matter all too much in the ground. And, and Ben here, the very low, retreating now to that uh, health pack, able to get it, uh -oh. regain some some momentum here, but Cherry will die. Sacred and Voidex already very low as well, trying to get that trace with seven, and Zaitu already opening up on the back line. King Kong 5, the supports are dead. That is a team kill on the side of Blink. Blink the thing. Only part of your team moves so quick. Ana, Zetiata, or Brick, these are regrettably slow heroes on rotation. It's on players like Voidex and Sacred End to make it keep them alive, shutting down the stall that could have gone much longer. Not only the ball not die, is running a tear through the back line of the Hornet. They're trying so hard. Minefield online for Ben, but someone has to get a touch, and there's nobody to really want to do so. At the end of the day, Ben going down so late in that battle. Fights to the back line, which, as I said, at the start of this round, if you do not protect your supports, Dome, the payload, can inch it closer and closer, half a meter remaining. It'll be Blinn moving on through, claiming map number two. Yeah, seven in that four kills in this exchange throughout this entire oh, fight. Make okay. that five. Sky Sniper unable to be tracked to that entire exchange. Shenandoah is falling one by already. Turning on to... Does find the guy planting the bomb. Hold the it into a second. 1v3 looking for the punt, looking for the last two. He's gonna find one that will rush with us. Absolutely a must make because of the, the An ease of easy them. What? The rest of his team is slowly collapsing. The Sombra is the last one. Oh, and then Boyd yeah. with the clutch. Ella gonna get the Nair, starting up the Nair train. Boy cannot get out of it. What are we gonna see? The forward air, then down air. 
taking some form of space outside the spawn door, but Dragon Blade's gonna look to take it right back with a huge shatter. Oh my god! Another, another pick! Another pick! Oh, he just keeps going in the fifth bag! Hard point in the hand of the other team. Toxic tried to find one. Finds a second! Does he get the third? He finishes off with the pistol! The entire team in front of him, and he's They're gonna find four. Like the ace, actually. Push oh. all the corner, and Jinji staying deep instead of going to fetch like usual. Hello everybody and welcome to another Shenandoah Esports stream. I'm Molly Dens joined by Will Jenkins for our double header this evening. Our first game of the night will be Rocket League followed up by our Overwatch team participating in the Super League. Will, it's your first time here on yeah. a Tuesday broadcast this semester. How are you feeling? I'm feeling absolutely phenomenal. It's it's weird not being on here on a, on a Wednesday broadcast when I'm typically on, but I'm excited yeah. to see what these teams uh, can bring and I, I love covering teams in pretty much every competition that we got yeah. so i'm more than ready to see what rocket league can deliver today hey the more the better honestly. exactly yeah more variety within our streams our rocket league team has been hard at work within these past couple of weeks since we had them on stream i say these past couple of weeks <laughs> it feels like it's been so long no yeah it was just it, last week that does. we had them on here for their necc week one matchup unfortunately they did end up getting reverse swept a very close game until the end but then they went out to compete at another tournament just this weekend, Will. Yeah, yeah they did a... Uh, it was Collision on the Coast, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, was the yep. name of it. And they... They had a mixed bag of results, but they also had a very, very difficult group. Yes. I think, I think they kind of got messed up a bit from the seeding, uh, for sure. Definitely luck was not in their favor for that. But... Despite the circumstances, they played very, very well, uh, according to their coach. So yeah. I'm excited to see what they kind of took away uh, from that competition and really can apply this to tonight and yeah. the upcoming weeks because lands are not easy to go no, to and compete on. It is a not. completely different environment than the in person or the online aspect of competition. So really being able to, to kind of gain that experience, gain that ability and mm -hmm. potentially draw it out and bring it into the next week. It should be exciting to see. Yeah. It's a whole new ball game, right? Yeah. And the fact that they're able to get this experience in person, like seeing your opponents face to face, that's pretty darn cool. Yeah. Not only did they play at the Collision on the Coast against the teams in that tournament, they also happened to play their NECC second week match there as well. Your opponent they happened to be facing was at the same tournament that said, hey guys, you want to play? <laughs> they went ahead and did that. Did end up losing that one as well. So while they are at an 0-2 record, yep. they have shown significant signs of improvement across the season. They even reverse swept an opponent called Radford that they ended up playing yes. for their Mid-Atlantic Esports Conference match. And that team is a very tricky one to go against. And I know personally that each of them were very proud of that win. Yeah, I uh, I, I, I personally was about to head uh, my way out the arena when I caught the... Uh, game five of that and they were absolutely hyped mm -hmm. for it and you could tell that yeah i mean just look at mango right now he's absolutely locked in and ready <laughs> no fear in that man's face right now and i mean to to be able to go from getting reverse swept to pulling off a reverse sweep yep. against a team like radford which isn't a pushover team they're mm -hmm. a they're a decent team and i would say one of the better teams in maec to be able to pull that off just goes to show the resilience and, and talent that this team has and the potential to, to do great things. Mm -hmm. And you know the crazy thing about all of this, Will, is that all of the matches that we have mentioned with NECC, with Mace, with Collision on the Coast, that has happened within the past seven days. Yeah, which these is absolutely guys, mental. Yeah, no, it, it is crazy the amount of work that these guys have been putting in, not only for the games they're playing, they're still practicing, they're <laughs> fod reviewing all outside of this. They are living and breathing Rocket League right now. And just to be back on that stage, returning, I believe, on late Sunday from that LAN event and ready to give it their all mm -hmm. here today. 
high expectations are on the board. We got to see them in their week one match. And by far, that was some of the best Rocket League we've ever seen them play. And it's that kind of game that's going to get them wins against teams like Radford and even potentially the opponent today. They'll be facing off against University of Delaware. They gotta be careful, this opponent currently undefeated. Yeah, definitely one of the stronger teams, I think, in their division. Uh, mm -hmm. It is really not a team to sleep on and by any standards, and may even be the favorite for some other schools uh, mm -hmm. to, to take it all the way, because this roster, I mean, has been absolutely solid. I mean, they've been together for, what, three years, three seasons, I believe? Yeah, yeah three, three seasons. seasons is, uh, very rare to find in the collegiate scene and when that happens you should worry because they yeah. are usually a well-oiled machine and make very little mistakes to exploit so if you can get that going for you it, you're going to be a scary team to stop in, in yeah. any competition. Yeah, like, I mean, especially in a game like Rocket League that's so heavily reliant on yes. team gameplay. There's only so much one individual can do to pull out all of these insane mechanical plays. But how are you getting these passes? How are you outmaneuvering your opponent? How are you moving around the field? Those are the things yeah. that separate the good teams from the great ones. And because the amount of experience that University of Delaware they have working together, that is a huge thing to look at, especially when Shenandoah, that's one of their main goals of improving on this semester, which they did show us before. Yeah, and it and to see the growth from this team uh, every single year uh, that I've been here, we've seen I've seen faces go in and out of the Rocket League mm -hmm. teams. To see this team just put in the time, put in the effort, week in and week out, they are grinding. I think harder than almost any Rocket League team we've had. Uh, don't quote me on that. But they have been, I mean, you mentioned it in seven days, they've gone to a land, they've had a match, they've had another match, like, <laughs> yep. they've had a lot yeah. on their plate, and they've handled it really well, and it, to, for them to be able to, to take a step back and say, hey, uh, I want to improve on this aspect of my mm -hmm. game, and to be able to, to fundamentally do that uh, it is not only a testament of your growth mindset, and also the coach's Mm -hmm. influence as well uh i think qualark has done an incredible job Absolutely. of fitting into this coaching role there was a couple questions after pops left a lot of people were wondering if there even would be a rocket league team mm -hmm. uh and he has stepped up and stepped up big for this squad and it shows with their progress and improving yeah and it's it's really only been an upwards trend for this team i mean mango heading into our fall semester last season was yeah. the only player that remained from previous years left with two fresh faces in eliminathan and kiazi and you know as that time has gone on we've seen these games from them well a lot of them have been close closing them out has been a struggle and they're going to keep continuing to improve on that especially when you're looking at Mango to be that leader, to be that IGL, to help guide this team and make them work together. He has this incredible level of mechanical talent that really helps guide Kiazi and Eliminathan to where they need to be and how they can operate as a team. And, you know, I, I hate to put pressure on one individual, <laughs> but uh, like he just has so much impact no. on the success of this squad. No, he does. And even when he wasn't the IGL, you could still see just the amount of impact that he had mm -hmm. on the squad. And... For him to be the oldest player, and I believe he's only a sophomore, he, if yeah. I am correct. I think he's a junior. Yeah, okay. I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong, Junior though. or we'll sophomore. Have to, we'll have to he's still got another year. <laughs> so let's... Uh, but it's just such a young roster, so to have that, that, that figurehead helping you along the way, helping you direct you in the game where the coach really can't, it is such an important thing to have. Because uh, yeah. you have uh, Eliminate, who I believe is a sophomore. Yep. And then you have Kiazi, who is a freshman. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's it's a young roster. So you need to make sure you have that that focused mindset. Look at <laughs> look at look at Kawhi. He's vibing. He's ready. Uh, <laughs> but you like, can tell. You can yeah, tell. You can you can tell. <laughs> you, you can tell how much fun these guys have. Like, but at the end of the day, they're here. They're here to play, and they focus when it comes time for games. Mm -hmm. And I think I think Mango does a phenomenal job at, at, at leading them to that direction. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, you see them right now, and they're, they're not sitting there all serious, like, oh, this is going to be a tough opponent. Like, they're laughing at each other. They're making jokes, and Qualark, the coach, is sitting there back, just like, hey, what's going on? I like to have these vibes on the upward trend. And uh, this is exactly the mindset you need to be going into any form of competition with, especially as an opponent that's just as difficult as Delaware. 
Yeah, no, and and speaking with uh, Qualark, he said that this is definitely going to be a tough competition tonight, but yep. he has faith in, in his squad, and, and to use the experience that they gained at this event, he, he says that they have a potential to take this to Game 5 and potentially even take it. Mm -hmm. So I think Shenandoah needs to play perfect tonight. Anything less will not suffice, essentially. Yeah. But knowing this team, it is still very much a possibility to have. It absolutely is, and th that's the thing, right? Is you need to you want to go into every game and give it your all yeah. and give it your best. And uh, this isn't going to be an easy matchup. We'll, we'll, we'll be straightforward. <laughs> this is not easy. You're going against the undefeated team yes. within your bracket, and you know they've hit a lot of higher highs. They've mm -hmm. played in a lot of other competitions, and even have hit higher peaks in individual ranking in the game. It is a daunting thing to look at, and uh, one of the things that this team, in my opinion, has done so well at just improving upon is their overall mental heading into a match. They don't let it affect them yes. nearly as much. Like, you can't go in there thinking like, oh, this is just a tough team. If we lose them, eh, why why do we really even try? No, they go in, they give it their all and take anything as a, as a learning opportunity. And that's part of the reason that we've seen so much growth in yeah. just a short span of this semester. Yeah, and, and that's such an important thing to have, especially in a game like Rocket League, where mm -hmm. it is so different because I have casted so many Rocket League yeah. games where one's been like a 10-0 and, <laughs> and then the team that scored zero oh, goes yeah. out and scores seven and holds <laughs> the other team to one. It's just so, you can't explain it. It's, it's, it's just truly strange. So I think having that short, I'm going to quote Mitchell Fine oh, okay. here. Okay, okay. All the greats have short-term memory. <laughs> And that is exactly what yeah. you need in really any eSport, but Rocket League especially, because every game is just so different. Yeah. The mistakes you make in game one could be non-existent in game two. Mm -hmm. So definitely definitely just being able to, to take a step back and be like, all right, we're going to score four goals in this, theoretically. Yeah. Like, just being able to mentally reset and regain after a tough loss is exactly what you need if you're going to make it in this, in this eSport. Yeah. I think what's kind of interesting about the game, too, is that it's so dang quick. Like, it is. Each game is five minutes. Like, you're playing anywhere it, between... It does not feel like five it, minutes. It literally doesn't. Like, it, it, it flies right by. Okay, maybe, maybe six if we count, like, all the replays. Okay, all if the we really want to go that but... far, if we want to go that far, fine. But five minutes of actual gameplay where your car is driving on the field... Yeah. Multiplied by three, that's 15 to 25 minutes that you're going to be playing Unless throughout it's a over series. Time. Unless it's over time. <laughs> let me do my math. Let me make my point, the okay? Math. <laughs> let, let the math math. We got, let the math. You got, you got to let the math math. Yeah, we'll yeah, we'll yeah. talk about overtime math if we get to an overtime. Okay, then cool, that'll be your cool, time cool. to shine. We, yeah, okay. Well, let's do that. But for now, 15 to 25 <laughs> minutes of gameplay, it flies right by. You yeah. do not have much time in between to adapt your play style. You need to make these changes on the fly yeah. and be able to understand the patterns of your opponent's gameplay and how you can kind of either disrupt them, find a new way to play around them or just completely change the game yeah. all together. And there's a couple different ways that they can do that. I'm going to use the match that they played last week as an example. They started out so fast. They were playing the game at such a high speed that their opponents couldn't keep up. But as that series went on, what their opponents did was start to get more aggressive. They were, were using these bumps and these demolitions to physically move players out <laughs> of the way and no longer passes could be connected. And that's where you need to figure out where that change is. Do they get more aggressive? Do we need to focus on boost? Do we slow down that style of play? And it's like so, such small things to yeah. look at throughout a series of Rocket League, right? Yeah, and it's it's that it's that hidden game of of chess essentially. Yeah. In, I, and, I, I, it, and it's in and it's every game, but mm -hmm. Rocket League I think is one that a lot of people don't think of it happening in because you think it's oh they're just hitting the ball to their teammates, teammates are scoring. No, you have to adjust <laughs> cons constantly to what other team is doing. If they're trying to slow you down, inviting the pressure, and then they hit you with a quick counter attack, you have to be like, okay, we need to have someone back, maybe an extra person back to deal with that. Yeah. Uh, if they're being aggressive, then you have to be aggressive back at them, which. It's a double-edged sword in its own yeah, right, yeah, yeah. but it just adds to that to that chess portion of mm -hmm. it. And I, another one is is boost control as well, because that is also such a big uh, part that a lot of people don't realize mm -hmm. in Rocket League is if you can control uh, the the boost on the edge, you're going to be in a good position for success.
Yeah, and when we get a bit of a vision of that now, you'll see the the orbs on the four corners and then at the midfield line there, those grant those full tanks of boost, yep. whereas the small ones only give you a little portion to move on forwards. And of course, they're going to take longer to respond, right? So yeah. you need to be pathing yourselves out and learning how to keep up with that style of gameplay. Delaware historically is a team that likes to go fast, that likes to give these huge bursts at the start. And with that kickoff, First going into Shenandoah's favor. It's a race back to get it in an early shot from Mango. Shenandoah, yes, they are smart about getting to the net. But the problem is they need to find these transitions back and forth from the defense to the offense. Yeah, we already see Delaware kind of getting aggressive on this defense, bumping them off of these offensive positioning. and But also Shenandoah really doing well to try and capitalize on a early mistake by Delaware. Uh, just Unfortunately, nothing came out of it. Meanwhile, Ooh, nice. Odds tried to get that ball into the into the net, but Kiazi was there to stop it. Yeah, Kiazi has been doing an excellent job taking the role of this more defensive position and giving Eliminathan more room to play up in the front side of the field. But so far, Shenandoah struggling to leave their own defensive end. Stellar has been placing these shots up high. Went for the double tap, couldn't get it. Odds almost had another one, but it's Kiazi in the way. That was a hood straight down into the ground. Shenandoah, they're still alive, but they're just taking a blundering of shots. They need to get this ball cleared soon. You can see the boost is struggling to stay up right now. Yeah, and that is that is one thing you do have to keep in mind if you are confound to your end, uh, is you run out of boost incredibly quickly. Mm -hmm. and. It, it can affect you negatively because then you're not going to be able to challenge for balls in the air. So definitely a, a good sign as Shenandoah was able to get this ball out of their own end. Mango trying for a shot on net, Ooh. not quite going to find anything. Eliminate tries to follow it up, but can't quite do it. And yeah. that ball is headed straight for the net. And Stellar will open up the scoring for Delaware 1-0 with 3.23 left in this one. Yes, Delaware were able to pop it right over Eliminathan's head there to eventually stop their defensive reign, which Shenandoah did an excellent job dodging that barrage of shots. But now they're down a, a goal. Still plenty of time to be able to work this one out. Big thing, though, is contesting odds in the air has been taking these huge leaps and bounds over the top of the net. Kiazi wants to give an opportunity to somebody like Eliminathan. Scooter, though, gets the touch first. Shenandoah need to be cautious of how they play, not over committing, because otherwise they're going to find themselves in a very similar situation that they just did. Yeah, and I think I think the key for Shenandoah in this one is not making, is, is being smart on defense. You want to try and minimize the amount of mistakes that you are making. Uh, we saw, we already saw what one kind of messed up defensive rotation after trying to get a counterattack happened. Mm -hmm. uh, Eliminate kind of caught out of position, led to a goal for Delaware, and right now, uh, this ball is just being ping-ponged in, uh, in the middle of the field. Now, a little bit in the end of uh, Delaware, so we'll see if Shenandoah can get anything on the end, but that cross isn't going to find anyone except the other team. Mm. Shenandoah, though, trying to get this uh, these these shots on net, but right now, Delaware just standing tall and firm in goal, not allowing anything in. Yeah, and then losing Kiazi to that demo, much more devastating for them on the offense. They had to race on back. Tip to double tap, not gonna get all too much. Now it's up to Mango, can he make the magic happen? He won't, but eliminate then, sure will. Shenandoah getting themselves on the board and look at this play. It was a huge pass down to Mango. They found him perfectly in the air. You're expecting your next man up. That's Eliminathan to hit the follow up tap and will. He got it perfectly. Yeah, and an absolute phenomenal job by Eliminate to be in that position in, in the first place. And then another kudos to him to be able to put that ball in the back of the net. I mean, that was not an easy uh, shot to make uh -uh. just simply because that's such an unconventional spot to be in. Yep. And I think Delaware just wasn't expecting that. And that leads to a goal for Shenandoah. And we're right back to square one in this one with a minute 45 left. So still plenty of time. But <gasps> Shenandoah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> an audible gasp from Molly right there. <laughs> and rightfully so. That was dangerously close to finding the back of the net and just squeaking in on that Ooh. odd little angle. But now no one back on Shenandoah. Eliminate able to barely recover uh -oh. in time. And that's a dangerous ball across. And Kiasi's oh. going to miss. But no one there. On, is, no one's 
there for Delaware. Uh, Shenandoah, they're breathing oh. a sigh of relief because that could have almost gone terribly. They're still not out of danger, though. <laughs> Osmus is the hit, too. Kiyosi got bumped out of the way, but they're finally going to get it out to a corner. We can breathe. We can let our hearts Ooh. rest just a little bit. Shenandoah playing with fire right now. Delaware, they're not done, though. They get a nice pass up over the top, outmaneuvering the Hornets to regain that one goal lead. Yeah, and really just a great job right there from Stellar to, to recognize Eliminate kind of being in like a, a back area, uh, so to say, in the goal, a little too far back, uh, which leads to yet another goal uh, for Delaware. So really unfortunate for Shenandoah. Uh, a couple, couple minor defensive mistakes, and Delaware more than capitalizes on uh, each and every one. Uh, very close to being another goal right there, as I was about <laughs> to make my point. Uh, but still... For, uh, 45 seconds left in this one. Still plenty of time for Shenandoah to find another goal and tie this thing up. And then we can start talking about overtime math. Uh, th then we can get there. But first, Shenandoah have to get that point on the board. Anything can really happen in a small duration of Rocket League. Step number one, though, needs to be getting a clear and maintaining control past the midfield line. When players like Stellar, like Odds, are in the way, it's not going to be an easy thing to do. Shenandoah weren't able to keep that ball close and found themselves r playing right into the hands of Odds, guaranteeing Delaware an insurance goal. Yeah, really unfortunate there by Shenandoah. A... Uh Defensive mistake, a double commit, and a double miss for Shenandoah and a wide open net for Delaware. And most most Rocket League players at the collegiate level are going to be able to put that one in uh, if you double commit and both miss the ball. So really unfortunate there by Shenandoah. <laughs> uh, but like I said, and like Mr. Mitchell Fine also says, all the greats have short-term memory. So I'm sure Shenandoah will be able to regain okay. and they try and get a goal back. Not quite going to be able to do so, but the ball is going to stay in the air. That was another thing you didn't account for in your mouth, the ball staying in the air. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that is very true. That is very there true. But what, what math we can do <laughs> is that Shenandoah <laughs> yeah. did end up losing that game number one. But they kept it very close for yes. the vast majority of it. And those big things that we want to point out for them are they're finding these passes, right? They're able to work with each other when they're playing on the offense. That's great. They're blocking a lot of the shots on the defense. Yeah. Also pretty darn good. But their biggest issue is when they want to clear this ball, they're banging it down to the other side, hoping someone can get there. When realistically, yeah. Delaware's already in that position. They're yeah. waiting for that to happen. So realistically, whenever Shenandoah tried to get out of defense, like, all right, it's time to go. Uh-oh, the blue hens have the ball. What <laughs> do we do? I mean, they kept finding themselves yeah. in the same cycle. And they want to be able to regain themselves moving forwards. Yeah, and I think I think they need to find that, that medium of being able to be aggressive, being able to attack, and yet still keeping your defensive integrity, keeping your yes. shape, keeping your rotations. Because we saw what happens when you don't miss the ball twice <laughs> leads to a goal. Uh, or just being slightly out of position, it's going to leave them that wide open. And Delaware is such a good team. You cannot afford to do that because if you do that, yeah. they will do exactly what they just did. And so I think, I think going forward, I want to see Shenandoah try and find this middle ground of being able to be aggressive on offense, being able to keep their defensive shape, mm -hmm. and then counterattacking with purpose, not just driving for the for the for the fun of it and then being out of rotation yeah and giving up a goal uh, to be fair be having this kind of defense to offense fluidity is yes. one of the hardest things in the it game it is the hardest exactly and you want to have that tempo set here shenandoah understand what went wrong in game number one now as we're heading into our second five minute period how will they be able to adjust from there delaware still with control and odds with a first one in the back and you'll notice right here because it was so early on eliminathan didn't have enough boost to actually power that shot over scooter and same thing with mango wasn't able to get that reset in time the tempo even being a hair off here will will cost though yeah and mango with full boost but just was in too close of a position to be able to get up to that ball in time and wasn't able to contest. So essentially, it uh, didn't really have much going for him in that defensive uh, bout. And we see the result uh, of that with a Delaware goal. And right now, Shenandoah trying to keep the pressure on their end. But who's back for Shenandoah? So 
What was that interaction? Sorry, I just, I just, <laughs> <laughs> I just saw like a car somersault over another car. I was not expecting that in the middle of my point again. It's, um, not, it's not car soccer. It's car gymnastics. Yeah, so start to learn that shortly. <laughs> yeah, apparently. And meanwhile, that's All a right. dangerous oh, ball stellar. towards the goal of Delaware. Not going to find anything. Right now, though, Shenandoah has come out of the gates flying after giving up this opening goal. Yeah, I mean, they almost had the opportunity there if it wasn't for where Stellar yeah. was positioned. And you'll notice, too, is that even when these shots go off, they are clean. But so is Delaware's defense. And the few passing plays that Shenandoah can manage to get are so difficult. Delaware, or more specifically, Scooter here, has been knocking them around like ragdolls. But they didn't get them that time. And look what happens. You give them the room to work. And oh, my, they will deliver. That's a second for Eliminathan. And take a look at the boost from the side of Delaware. Two players with single digits leading up to that goal. And Shenandoah with picture-perfect team play. What a pass from Mango to eliminate to give Shenandoah the tying goal right here. And Mango, Mango is going right. to make that the leading goal for Shenandoah. And just like that, blinking or miss it, Shenandoah is ahead in this one. And this is exactly what they wanted. They got the hit off the kickoff. Kiazi may not have gotten that last touch, but it was enough to bounce off the corner. Mango is there to follow up. This is the Shenandoah that we know, the one that can get a read off of each other so incredibly well that they make it look like so flawless. They're on the same wavelength, and they're not done yet. I mean, this is just them being aggressive. It is a heavy commit, though. Mango tried to bump Scooter out of the way, forces all three players of Delaware relatively close together. Not getting that hit there. That one's all right. You have Kiazi to help back this up. This is where Shenandoah has been the weakest, is on these rotations, back from offense to defense. It looks dicey, and they have to race back and oh. forth, but they end up hitting more than one roadblock, and just like that, Delaware have tied it up again. So unfortunate, Shenandoah throwing everything they can at Delaware. Stellar almost blocked their own teammate's shot, but just unable to get uh, Shenandoah, just unable to withstand the pressure that Delaware uh, just gave to them, and a goal as a result, but you could afford to do that because now your game's tied again. You're not you're not losing. We're you're resorting. not winning. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> but I I I do want to. I was going to mention something mm -hmm. uh, back when Shenandoah is still at the lead. Was I want to see if Shenandoah keeps up this aggressiveness? Mango trying Ooh. to get that ball into the back of the net, but just unable to. I I want to see if Shenandoah does this. It stays aggressive with mm -hmm. a lead or with the game tied, or if they elect to go for something more conservative. I think the aggressiveness has helped them. It has. But it, again, it, I'm going to use that double-edged sword uh, analogy mm -hmm. because it's a lot easier to get out of position on defense as a result. So you need to play perfect Rocket League in order to get here. Mango! And Mango Woo! can do just that as a goal from Mango. Give Shenandoah the lead once again, and that is his second of the match. It was a pass to himself, right? He yeah. got the hit first down midfield and a lucky bounce. Not even lucky. That's totally calculated yeah, geometry-wise. Yeah, I can do and that. And just put it right in front of the goal. Like, hey, the, the wall is your new teammate. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah. You get that. And now Shenandoah back in the lead once again. That aggressive play style is really working out for them, even though Delaware Ooh. have done such a great job I taking initiative cool. on defense to kind of meet Shenandoah before they can get to that shot, which has helped them a lot, but not nearly enough to prevent them from scoring. Shenandoah heavily in control of possession, and Mango is just going to give them another one. That's his third of this game alone. And that is the hat trick for Mango in this one. And Shenandoah looks completely different from game <laughs> number one. And look at that. Shenandoah just smiles all around, but save the smiles for two minutes, three seconds uh, later. You got to finish yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, you got to yeah. finish out this game number two first. But still, a phenomenal, phenomenal start to uh, this game number two, and I say a start, I mean, we're over halfway through, but <laughs> you you get what I mean. It, we, we catch you. I, I catch your drift. Yeah, I appreciate uh, it. Shenandoah right now, they, they're feeling themselves, and as soon yes. as they get confident, you'll notice how their gameplay quality soars, and they're able to make plays like this. Mango is just on another level. This game, he's over there, he's over there, and he's getting goals left, right, and center. He's just been leading them all the way through. Eliminathan and Kiazi have played excellent supporting roles to the mechanical showcase that we've been witnessing thus far. But now that that confidence has taken a dent, 
Shenandoah Good old need to ensure that they can maintain this momentum throughout these final 88 seconds. Yeah, and it's and it's definitely ooh, look at the look at the quick math. Yeah, no, it that was 82. Was, I was wrong. I was gonna say. Yeah. I was yeah. about to give you props. I was you, you like, were, wait a minute, well, that's not right. You were about to correct my incorrect. You were yeah. about to agree with my incorrect math. I I was, and then I was like, wait, that doesn't add up. But no, it's and mm. and, and it's part of the part of the the. The hypothetical, not uh -huh. really hypothetical uh -huh. question I posed earlier is how is Shenandoah <laughs> going to play with the lead? And right now we're seeing a more aggressive Delaware than than what we saw in the first part. And so I think Shenandoah now <laughs> needs to respond <laughs> with uh, some more conservative defense. And of course, right as I go to say that, good old Caster Curse once again. And we are back to square one. Eight goals in this game. Four to four. And, uh, yeah, we're right back to square one with uh, a minute left. Yeah, here, here's the thing. Shenandoah, when they are good, they are good. That fire is lit and it's ablaze. But the second you try to puff it out, you'll see that dwindle down. That flame gets smaller and smaller. And with Delaware getting those two goals and what potentially a, a third year in the second. Oh, I mean, it is so, such a struggle for Shenandoah. I mean, they get there, they do what they need to do well, but the second they show a sign of weakness, Delaware are able to take a minuscule opportunity and just absolutely run away with it. Yeah, and if you take a look at the Shenandoah side, uh, two players with zero boost, uh, it's got to be hard to contest the ball when you can't fly in the air. So really unfortunate there by SU. Uh, and finds themselves at, uh, after being two goals up, now they're a goal down oh, and Stella. make that My two goals down uh, as Stellar with Watch a this. just phenomenal Watch this. phenomenal <laughs> <Okay>. flip reset. <laughs> I mean, yeah, not yeah. much not much Mango could have done there. Phenomenal flip reset from Stellar. Definitely uh, definitely showing off a little bit, I think, for, uh, for stream there. But phenomenal goal from Stellar. Uh, and increases their lead to two. It does. Delaware now have that insurance goal once more. 30 more seconds for the Hornets to change that narrative. What else have you got to show us here in game number two? It started out so great. You do not want it let, to let it slip away this late in game number two. Scooter is just barraging shots down in the net. The blue end have left it wide open, though. They completely misunderestimated what the Hornets can accomplish. And that right there could be a critical error as Mango gets it to one point. Yeah, and just like that, the breath of life is back in Shenandoah as just a phenomenal just capitalization by Mango to, to really get the mistake on Delaware's side and convert it into a goal. And now Shenandoah trying to get this last second goal, but uh, odds is yeah. able to just mu I'm going to say box out as, a, as like a basketball term, but quite literally just boxed out uh, whoever that was in the air. And, and it leads to a goal in Delaware. Uh, says, yeah, no, no comeback in this one, and yeah. And here's the thing, is that <laughs> Delaware, the two last two goals that they have scored have been incredible showcases of their own mechanical skill. They're not a team to be underestimated. There's a reason that yes. they have found so much success within the game of Rocket League. And I mean, th this is just what that extra practice, that extra time as yeah. a team can get you. Squads like us, Shenandoah, they can really put up a fight. They can make it close and almost take it away. But if you even lose sight of that for a second, I mean, that's where some of the yeah. best teams are going to come in, spot that weakness, and turn it against you. Yeah, and you have to be very careful when you do have that lead because then you're also thinking, I think, a little too much in that aspect, being like, okay, now we need to make sure that we do this. We need to adjust our line. Mm -hmm. No, just stick with what you were doing that was working. If you see that the other team start to adjust their strategy, maybe try and find a way to adjust yours. I'm not... I'm not, a, I'm, not a, I'm not a big Rocket League player, so I'm not, I'm not sure the exact details that go into it. But it 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 then that chess that that chess game I was talking about definitely comes into play in that scenario where you're like, okay, do we adjust what we've been doing that's been working, mm -hmm. or do we change to something completely different? I think Shenandoah didn't really change it, but oh, definitely. <laughs> Yeah, we're, there we go. we're going Lights out. We're super focused. nighttime we are broadcast. Locked in. I can see our producer <laughs> in the background. He 100% was just like, oh boy, that just happened. But hey, yeah. it's lights out. It's time to focus here. Shenandoah's about to do lights out. Reverse sweep. Absolutely. Right here, folks. It is. This is match point for the Hornets. They may be down for all of our games so far. Yet to find that win in NECC. 
But it ain't over until it's over. They got a reverse sweep against Radford in their most recent match. Can they manage to work that same magic here today? They're off to an incredible start. This aggressive style of pushing the limits of that speed. They're starting to get that boost underway. And Will, they're not done fighting yet. No, they are not. And this is, this is really... I mean, the last game was an example of it. So this game has so much more potential to, to be that kind of variance that we mm -hmm. talked about in Rocket League, Woo! where, no, okay, where <laughs> no game is the same. And <laughs> are, we, are we watching like a horror game there or something on the side? Hey, like, well, what, this what is you your got first going time on? casting with me. I do this all the time. I am into it. I am in <laughs> the zone. And like when it's moments like that that are that close, I mean, the Hornets are giving themselves yeah. opportunities. Delaware are just one step ahead on that defense. And it doesn't take much to catch them completely with their pants down. Mango is going to get that first goal in for Shenandoah, and for the very first time, they will be in the first lead. So I think that's the third instance of a casting curse from both of us. Yeah, yeah, Because, yeah. like, you were just talking about how Delaware was doing really well to stick with it, and then Mango just puts it in the back of the net off, yeah. of, off of Delaware mistake. But that's but the kind no. of cast, of course, we're looking for. Yeah, exactly. And and it was really just a great job there of, of Mango to recognize that, that hole in the defense that Delaware had mm -hmm. and uh -oh. able to exploit it. And speaking of holes in the defense, Odds is going to take, uh, take initiative of one given by Shenandoah and tie this game right back up. I mean, how much of that is a hole in the defense, to be totally honest Eliminate with you? was there. Eliminate was there. I think he it was just better offense. Coming. Yeah, yeah. And, and like you had two players in Delaware, they decided to go for the double commit at the end. A yeah. risky play if you miss, but an incredibly <laughs> rewarding one if exactly. you don't. And that's going to give them that one extra point on the board. Now, Shenandoah, it is their turn to start to strike back. We're noticing these patterns after they score that were either get scored on themselves. They really try to turn it up to 11 in order to offensively pressure their opponents. If you're going to let players such as Scooter get these long passes down, you got to be ready for a read on it or at least some sort of redirect that is away from an orange player over someone on blue. And that was a risky double commit there by Shenandoah. Really just, oh, <laughs> I thought that was in. Oh, Shenandoah dodges deep a bullet. Breaths, deep breaths. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I was going to talk about the double commit, but I'm going to talk about how close Shenandoah was to giving up another goal, oh, a wide open mm, net, and yeah. Odd says, okay, enough playing around. I'll put this in the back of that, but it's just the defensive rotations from Shenandoah just seem to be slightly off, and it is costing them. Thankfully, it didn't cost them a goal, but Delaware ended up scoring anyways. It's not entirely on their defense. What they're doing on defense isn't terrible. Yeah. But Delaware, if you'll notice, watch how fast this ball yes. is moving from player to player or even just individual to individual. That's a double tap from Scooter off the crossbar, and it goes so gosh dang speedy that <laughs> they, know it. they don't even have an opportunity to react. Eliminathan was there, but if you're even a hair short of that timing, and like that's just what it comes down to in a game that goes at the pace of Rocket League. Yeah, and really just phenomenal team play by uh, by Delaware, and you can really see how well these these players bounce off one each other. And this is exactly what you get when you've been playing for three seasons. Yep. I mean, they are absolutely just phenomenal in a well-oiled machine, uh, and have been absolutely just ruthless on these uh, on these attacks and the defensive mistakes and stellar <laughs> showing off a little bit just gonna flick that pass and fake out uh kiazi on defense and that is gonna lead to another goal for delaware uh, delaware again they're an undefeated team yep. they know they're each undefeated other for a reason they know each other so well and yes. uh, yeah they're undefeated for a reason they're, they're putting <laughs> they're really putting their foot down here in game number three in shenandoah they're starting to feel that presence a little bit more time isn't over though you got about half half the game still left if you want to push it up but it needs to start with getting delaware out of your defensive end they score another one here you are looking at an even greater comeback that may be near impossible so shenandoah need to turn the tides right here and right now starting with a clear and ideally finishing with a goal mango serving that last line of defense to keep delaware off the board but at just times like these that they can only take so many hits before they crumble yeah, it, it's really just like a barrage right now coming out from Delaware and Shenandoah trying to weather the storm, but just getting absolutely... They're doing a great job for yeah, it. Yeah, they're, they're getting bumped, they're getting demolished, uh, they're just trying to block shot after shot 
waiting for that perfect counterattack because that is that is a legitimate strategy that you can do if you're confident enough in your defense you can just sit back absorb pressure uh and and wait for the other team to make a mistake and then capitalize on it but right now delaware being super aggressive i mean that is i believe the third demo we've seen in this game alone uh mm -hmm. so it's just been absolutely just pure aggression coming out from delaware and they've benefited completely from it i mean just look at the score line it's been working out for Delaware, and Shenandoah have literally been blown up at points, and <laughs> they still keep on fighting. I mean, you had a nice carry from Mango down to the other end, and unfortunately, Cassie are eliminated, and we're just a little bit too far behind to actually make anything happen off of that play. Now you're down to less than a minute. The hopes may be drawing low, but the spirits need to stay high until the very end. Stellar getting that bump onto Mango opens the door once again, but Eliminate in there to slam it right in their face, getting another knockdown to the orange side. They need to make something happen now. Kiazi with attempted hit over the top, unfortunately slightly off target. Just 30 seconds remaining in potentially this series alone, unless something seriously crazy happens right now. Yeah, and one thing I've noticed is the boost on the side of Shenandoah. They're kind of struggling to pick up these boosts. I saw Kiazi on uh, less than half for almost a half minute, which is not something you should be have going on uh, in a Rocket League match. And I think I think that was Delaware's key to this game, uh, to this game three, is just controlling this boost, keeping the ball in the mm -hmm. end of Shenandoah, not allowing them to get comfortable. And that leads to the win and a successful 3-0 for the University of Delaware. Yeah, Delaware will be maintaining their undefeated yes. record today. Shenandoah did their best to knock them off of their high posts. And, you know, they did have a lot of highlight moments, yeah. particularly in game number two where they started to get a feel for <laughs> this game. And all right, Mango in particular, yeah. that was probably some of the best I've seen from him this season. I mean, he that was phenomenal. four goals in a single match. And I say a single match. That was literally all in the final <laughs> two and a half minutes. Yeah, so, it was, yeah. was crazy. It was a crazy just scenario because we had game one where there was like I believe three goals total or like four goals total. We had four goals in like the first like two minutes. Yeah. And then we have like what was the final score in that round? Was it like eight to nine? It was five to seven. Yeah, twelve goals. Yeah. In a game two is just absolutely ridiculous, especially at the collegiate level where all the teams are so good at defense. Uh, it's so well coordinated. Usually they've been playing for, together for multiple years, mm -hmm. such as Shenandoah, it's their second season together, yeah. and Delaware is their third season. So you can, the signs of life are there for Shenandoah. Mm -hmm. I don't think you emphasize too much on the loss and you take away as many positives as possible yeah. and, and that's kind of the thing right is it shenandoah they're constantly on this growth trend they're yes. playing within the necc's champion league which if you guys don't know <laughs> is the second highest one you yeah. can possibly have the one above it is completely invitational and those are gonna be like the best teams in the country so the fact that shenandoah were able to place at this level and manage to keep a lot of these games competitive and drawing mm. them out to decent lengths and like that on its own is an achievement they're using these games as a learning opportunity and we're only we're going to look forward to seeing more growth from them in yep. the future. And lucky for us, Will, we're going to get even more of an insight on the desk. I have word that we are going to have an <laughs> interview with our coach, Qualark, coming up in a minute. So don't go anywhere. We'll see you back in just a moment. At 3 at 23 left in this one. Yes, Dylan were, were able to pop it right over Eliminathan's head there to eventually on the board. And look at this play. It was a huge pass down to Mango. They found him perfectly in the air. You're expecting your next man up. That's it. Regain that one goal lead. Yeah, and really just a great job right there from Stellar to, to recognize Eliminate kind of being in like a, a bad. They weren't able to keep that ball close and found themselves playing right into the hands of odds, guaranteeing Delaware an insurance goal. Yeah, really unfortunate. And you'll notice right here, because it was so early on, Eliminate didn't have enough boost to actually power that shot over Scooter. And same thing with Mango, wasn't able to get that room to work. And oh my, they will deliver. That's a second for Eliminate. And take a look at the boost from the side of Delaware. Two players with Shenandoah, and just like that, blink it or miss it, Shenandoah is ahead in this one. And this is exactly what they wanted. They got the hit off the kickoff. Kiazi may not have gotten that last touch, but it was enough to Give Shenandoah the lead once again, and that is his second of the match. It was a pass to himself, right? He yeah. got the hit first down midfield, and a lucky bounce. Of course, right as I go to say that, 
good old caster curse once again and we are back to square one eight goals in this game four to four with Watch a this. just phenomenal Watch this. phenomenal <laughs> <Okay>. flip reset <laughs> i mean yeah not yeah. much not much mango could have done there phenomenal flip reset. critical error as mango gets it to one point yeah and just like that the breath of life is back in shenandoah I'm gonna say box out as a, as like a basketball term, but he quite literally just boxed out uh, whoever that was in the air, and it, and it leads to a goal. Get down. that first goal in for Shenandoah, and for the very first time, they will be in the first lead. So I think that's the third instance of a casting curse from both. Like, it's just the defensive rotations from Shenandoah just seem to be slightly off, and it is costing them. Thankfully, it didn't cost them a goal, but it goes so gosh dang speedy that <laughs> Shenandoah they don't even have an opportunity to react. Eliminating was. What a series that we had here today for the Shenandoah Rocket League team. Even if it was a 3-0 defeat, this team has continued to improve over the course of this semester and the past one. A big part of that is our lovely coach, Quark, who is joining us on the desk. Thank you so much for Thank coming you, on Molly. up. And, you know, we're, we're always so happy to have more insight into this team and how they have been improving. But first, I want to get your overall thoughts on this series today. Was it really the result that we expected to see? What are some things that you liked that Shenandoah pulled out today. So, uh, you know, this is definitely a really good team. You know, Delaware, yeah. they've been playing a while. You know, they're, they're a good team. So we were definitely expecting a tough match today. Um, you know, we wanted the, in the series to go the other way today. Yeah. But, you know, NECC, we're just focused on learning and growing from playing these better players. And, you know, it was exciting. And the series went pretty well. I, you know, we obviously want to win it, but... You know, we started out, our defense was pretty hot. We held them to three goals, which was I was happy yeah. with. So I told him, I was like, all right, you know, three goals. That's a, You know, you can win against three yeah. goals, you know. So I told him, I was like, all right, time to pick, get the offense going, time to pick it up. Mm -hmm. And then we came out with five goals, which I was very excited about, except they had seven <laughs> now. So, uh, you know, we picked up the offense, but we also, you know, lacked on defense a little bit. So, you know, mm -hmm. just tailoring it in in that last game back to one and four. So... You yeah. know, we uh, kind of went the opposite direction, but it's fine. They picked up their momentum and they did well, but, you know, I'm happy with the series so far. Yeah, like it's all that process of finding that happy medium. And mm -hmm. Will and I were talking, that's one of the hardest things that you can do in Rocket League. But in the highs that we did see in both offense and defense showcases great potential for a lot of these matches moving forwards. And you, of course, know that the opponents in the NECC Champions Division they're not going to be easy to beat. And, oh, you know, yeah. going forward through the rest of this season, I mean, do you guys have, like, this confidence that you're kind of building up? Like, what's been that main focus for your improvements? So oh, far? yeah. I mean, I definitely feel like, excited for, like, the future matches. Yeah. And there, our main thing right now is just getting our offense working as a team. Where, like, previously we've had a tendency to... Uh, I want to say, you know, play hero ball where, you know, yeah. everyone will get the ball and mm -hmm. they get excited and they want to <laughs> do something cool because they're on the stream. <laughs> so I think our biggest focus has been, you know, working as a team, you know, getting the passes off, getting some passing goals. To really use your teammates because that's how we score. Yeah. And, you know, Rocket League's a team game. You're not going to win 1v3, um, even though odds try to try to today. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think that's really what uh, shifted the momentum today. Is he had a really yeah. good flip reset. That was incredible. And um, our players weren't expecting to see that come out. And then mm -hmm. uh, Stellar had a really good double tap off a kickoff, and it really kind of killed a lot of our momentum. It's a, yeah. Yeah, because like you know, when we're playing certain level players, you know, you expect certain shots to go in and certain tendencies and certain consistencies. And you know, playing some better players, it really. Throws off our, also uh, throws us off our game because now you're like, oh, they can do these things. <laughs> <laughs> now we have to be careful. <laughs> yeah, and th that's what you're gonna see with higher level mm. teams that have seen these peaks or even more competition together. And this exactly. team, uh, they've only been together for one and a third of a semester, right? And mm -hmm. uh, they're continuing to build that up, and they've worked really well with that along the way. And you know, you have two brand new brand new players, oh, right? Yeah, Eliminathan and Kiazi are joining Mango on this lineup. And uh, how have you really seen that start to gel together? Like, what have been some of, like, your, your proudest moments as a coach there? Uh, that's, that's a tough one. That's a I, tough I, one. I, I. It's definitely been exciting to see each player grow individually and as a team. Mm -hmm. I think one that was... Uh, I found most interesting it was like funny the other day is uh you know we were I was playing with them all together and uh -huh. then um you know they got a pretty good goal on me 
and uh, they all started making fun of me. So I mean, <laughs> even though that was annoying, that was a pretty that was a pretty fun moment because they yeah. you know they were vibing, they were having fun. Um, but yeah, so far like they've all been hitting like peak MMRs. They've been doing well, so it's been cool seeing them grow and like learn how to play in a competitive sense better. Yeah, and you know that that's what all this growth is. You guys have had an incredibly busy week of Rocket League, and I'm sure you're glad to kind of take a breath. Okay, you have a match tomorrow, but after that, you can take a breath and kind of relax, step back, and get reoriented for these upcoming games that you have this season, and not even halfway over so far. And before, Joe, I'm going to let you go, and, and you sure you got some stuff to talk about after that one. Do you have any other comments, shout-outs, anything you'd like to say on stream? Um, You know, just shout-out to Delaware. You know, all their guys seem pretty cool. You know, they're yeah. always nice in Discord, and they're a really good team. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think we play them in MAC again this semester yeah. or at some point this semester. So, you know, we'll cool. be seeing them back. Yeah, you're going to be ready for round two exactly. next time around. So, Delaware, you better watch out. But exactly. it was great to have you out here, Joe. Really appreciate it on the interview first time hey. with you. So, Let's hey, go. we'll have to do it more yeah. often. But we're going to go ahead and let these guys go. We're not done with Shenandoah Esports yet. Tonight we have our Overwatch Super League match coming up at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. So make sure to be back there for the start of their Super League game.
We've been here before We're both so broke That's something it'll keep us afloat Don't walk too slow We can't keep falling deeper again Came too close And it tastes so far from pure A rush of blood But we search for so much
Does find the guy planting the bomb. Hold the it into a second. 1v3 looking for the clutch, looking for the last two. He's gonna find one though. He gets it with the boss. Absolutely a must make because of the, the An ease of easy them. What? The rest of his team is slowly collapsing. The Sombra is the last one. Oh, and then Blue yes. with the clutch. Nella gonna get the Nair, starting up the Nair train. Boy cannot get out of it. What are we gonna see? The forward air, then down air. Taking some form of space outside the spawn door, but Dragon Blade's gonna look to take it right back with a huge shatter. Oh my god! Monster. Another oh, pick! Another oh, pick! It, oh, he just keeps going in the fifth bag! Hard point in the hand of the other team. Toxic tried to find one. Finds a second! Does he get the 30? Finishes shots? off with the what pistol! Kill. The entire team in front of him, and he's They're gonna find like four! Domino. The ace, actually! Push oh. all in the corner and Jinji staying deep instead of going to fetch like usual. Oh my oh god, my. kick off probably with a four piece. The Shenandoah Esports broadcast continues here as our Overwatch team is set to take the stage for their fourth week of the NACE Super League season. I'm, of course, Molly Den, still joined by Kevin Clayton for the first time on the Overwatch broadcast. Very happy to have you here today. And while you may not have been up here on the desk with me, Kevin, you've definitely been keeping track of where our Overwatch team has been. Oh, absolutely. I have been in the back of house working on the replay tech, which means I get to see all of the beautiful moments that the Shenandoah a team puts together, puts on this amazing show, and while the record so far is a little bit on the downside, yeah. I have to say I love my clips, I am hungry <laughs> for clips, and I am excited for today's match. And as you should be, you mentioned Shenandoah, perhaps being down 0-3 isn't their ideal turnout for the season. I must remind you that this is the NACE Super League, the best of the best invitation-only conference as you are going to find within the NACE Star League. Out of the teams that they've played so far, all three of them, and uh, most people's opinions, are within the top 10 teams of the country. So not too much of a blow, necessarily, to Shenandoah's pride so far. As we look ahead to do our match today. You could say this one is slightly easier than the others, but Kevin, it's a challenge nonetheless. Yeah, up against UT Dallas, it is interesting to see that, as you mentioned, you have a team that, compared to the other opponents Shenandoah has faced so far, while they are on the lower seat side of things, these mm -hmm. are still like top 10, top 20 yeah. teams in the country. And because of that, I am hoping to see that Shenandoah is able to sort of go hand to hand, yeah. fist to fist, and see some sort of boxing, some sort of duel where it's all in, 
try to make a name for ourselves and really show people we're not here to mess around. Yeah. And you actually bring up a very interesting point here is we've had a lot of changes coming yes. to the game, right? So just last week alone, we had the single biggest patch ever in Overwatch history. It dropped six hours before our game time. Nobody <laughs> knew what was going to happen throughout that day. Shenandoah did their best to adapt, but now they have had this time to go through and figure out, all right, what heroes are going to be good? What play style is going to be favored? And speaking to their coach, Sacred End, who's also playing on the team, he feels like that this has almost evened out the playing field in a way. A lot of these teams are on the same page of developing these compositions, and because Shenandoah have found a lot of comfort within what we'll see today. Uh, they have these expectations that this game can be close. Yes, and with all of that being said, I do want to acknowledge that while you have these longer fights going on, as now these health pools have started to increase, mm -hmm. we have seen sort of a meta develop around one of my favorite tanks and oh. some of Shenandoah's favorite tanks, the <laughs> hamster himself, the wrecking ball. And I'm curious to see today what sort of game plan both teams will go in. I expect to see at least a little bit of Wrecking Ball v Wrecking Ball from both yeah. sides, but with going forward, I'm hoping to see what sort of strategies Shenandoah has been cooking up over the last week or so. And the Wrecking Ball isn't too far off. We will go ahead and give you that little teaser. A fun fact, it actually is uh, Ben's best tank hero uh, that he's been pulling out. But we've never seen it before because I'm sorry, the hamster has been undisagreeably the worst <laughs> tank in the game for a very long time. So the smile on his face when he's like, ooh, this guy's pretty good again. And now they need to work on synergizing around this composition. This is also, in many people's opinions, one of the most difficult comps to successfully play because there's so many fast moving pieces that you need to coordinate together to successfully get a kill. Yes, and with all of that, there's also this side of these, uh, the healing side of this aspect, mm -hmm. right? You're playing with multiple characters who have these generally great healing options, but as we've seen with the DPS changes, having this reduced healing as your yep. tanks are going in, the big thing is the map has suddenly evolved into, yes, you can have your healers go for the health, or uh, like your traditional here, yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> hey, hey, we, we got to get warmed up. It's yeah, all good. Exactly. <laughs> um, well, you can go for your traditional heroes like the Kiriko and stuff like that. We've seen more so that players have become a lot more fist fighty, picking healers that, while, yes, do have this good healing side of things, they also want to fight. They want to get yeah. into the mix, which means that you're seeing a lot more scrappiness across the map. And if you're going to be doing that, you, your healer's not going to be there with you, which means you have to rely on your little buddy on the field, your health packs. Mm -hmm. And so going into this, I'm hoping to see, again, lots of this boxing, yep. lots of this sort of well, aggressive play style, but then seeing sort of which team has this better control of the map, not just on whatever point we're going to be seeing, but also beyond that, really mm -hmm. controlling the space, these passageways, and showing what they're made of. It's quite literally a game of chess that you're trying to play. Not only are you looking at some different heroes thrown into the mix, but you also need to outmaneuver your opponent. Your opponent's not just gonna sit there and let you shoot them. They're gonna be playing these very fast active heroes right back at you. So finding this balance between aggression, are we going to peel and help our supports? Are we just gonna let them die? Like that is a genuine decision that you have to make when you're playing a composition of this type and you know, Shenandoah, this is new. They're, we're used to seeing them with a big old hammer, maybe the Romantra or the Junker Queen. Were you playing very close together? You all walk in at the same time. Maybe that isn't their forte anymore. So now that you have the opportunity to switch it up, I'm we're really realistic. We're getting our first look into a brand new side of this team, testing it out against a squad who's well known for this competition themselves. Yes, and now with all of that, you have a war weekend you have wrecking ball you have a team that you're wanting to build around in some capacity mm -hmm. but what sort of with these changes what are you expecting to see from the side of shenandoah or frankly ut dallas is there mm -hmm. anything specific you're looking forward to seeing or 
something that you're just like, the meta has evolved to the point where we are guaranteeing this sort of thing. It's almost a guarantee. I think the only thing that may change throughout it is on the control center portion of our very first map. So Lijong Tower coming out, very well known for dive, but also has these opportunities to play Brawl. This is UTD's choice. In the past, they have used their tank player, Derpy, which, great name, by the way. <laughs> but he's also very well known within the competitive scene for his Reinhardt and his Ramantra, more of these brawly heroes, which also begs the question is, are, are they comfortable on this new idea of a meta? Or are they just going to stick with good old Faithful, run it down mid with the hammer, and <laughs> hope that Shenandoah aren't ready for it? And a map such as Lijong Tower gives you options of what you would really like to try out and get a feel for your opponent. I wouldn't be opposed to this game starting off with a handshake from both teams saying, <laughs> you want to start off with what we do best and seeing what happens. That'd like be awesome. This sort of... Reinhardt or Sigma action, but when it go going forward, I wouldn't be surprised if we see it for maybe like a round, and then they're like, okay, as fun as it is, as much as we <laughs> enjoy this environment, it's a new day, it's a new Overwatch patch, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. by God, we need a different strategy going forward. Yeah, and again, it's it's still new. A week is not a lot of time yeah. for teams to plan this out. And a, a lot of what Overwatch is based off of, and with e even other professional esports as well, is what are the pros doing? What What is like the top level of competition? What is their idea of what is good right now? We haven't had that. I mean, there's yeah. theories that are going around and where everyone's been trying to is collegiate or matches like these to define what is to be played, what can be successful and even shake up the best. Like you never know what's going to work unless you try it. Now, we're going to get ready to start out oh, here man. on Gardens. If this is what's happening, Kevin, <laughs> it does make me very happy on the inside. Is it actually going to happen? We're going to have to find out on that one. Yeah, uh, we'll see going forward. <laughs> this first scrap, I wouldn't be surprised if they do just sort of agree. Like, going forward, let's see what each other are made of. But after the first big skirmish, I wouldn't be surprised if you do see it. a bit of a change up for what these teams have to offer. Again, while Reinhardt has his place in this meta, it's not as strong as some of the other characters that we have seen over the last couple of days. And so as this fight begins, it'll be interesting to see. Well, you see, Kevin, is where this can work out. Reinhardt, eh, kind of met. But when you're playing into another Reinhardt, oh my goodness, is it fun? Ben knows it, sails right in, charge doesn't get as far, and Shenandoah are forced back. They see that the DPS matchup that you have with a Bastion versus the May and the Cassidy is lower. That's why Fwinex needs to hit these shots on the good old Cowboy and continue to do it. Shenandoah are able to walk back in and just look how much Cherry is pumping the heels into Ben. Eventually he shall fall, yet his nuff has been done on the DPS side of things, or more specifically the Voidex side of things to get them that cap. Yeah, Dallas doing a great job of controlling the point early and prioritizing those targets. That is the name of the game right now when it comes to dealing with these fights is you need to be on the same page. While there may be multiple targets, well, you may have the chance to take out multiple people. Because of the health increase, you really need to be aware of who you want to target first. So now as Shenandoah gets control of the point, pushes UT Dallas back a little bit, I wouldn't Beautiful. be surprised if the supers start to begin to build up as we do see Cherry is ready to rock and roll on the side of Shenandoah. Yeah, her pulling out this window early, like all it does is just force UT Dallas back. And that's great. It's one less battle you're going to have to take and they have to walk into you. Now you need to be afraid of their own window. It's a nice Maywall placed at their backs. Earth Shatter almost online. Ben has to stay alive. It's another incredibly aggressive pin from our good friend Derpy on the tank. That is going to remove Shenandoah's front line and the rest fall like dominoes. Yes, a good team kill for the side of Dallas and the ultimates still available for the side of UT Dallas. You have Bastion and Lucio mm -hmm. ready to rock and roll. Reinhardt getting very close, same thing with Torb, but on the other side, I mean, it's starting to look like an even game. I wouldn't be surprised if Shenandoah can get the jump on this next fight. Yeah. That is going to be the big advantage that they need. 
as this boxing begins. Oh, it's a two is in, the two earth shatters, and it will be Derby's hammer that shall hit the ground first, and so are Shenandoah, except they unfortunately are going six feet under. One ultimate, one kill, UT Dallas, perfect execution. Oh my goodness, two team kills back to back, and I mean, this is the bloodbath that you were expecting. <laughs> we talked earlier, this is the aggressive we a play style that we like to see, but still. Right <laughs> I mean, Ben's going right in. Want to give Derpy taste of own medicine, and there just throws enough into a popsicle. I mean, Shenandoah, you come into that with the ultimate advantage, right? You pull out the blizzard, you use the earth shatter, knowing that there isn't really a response on the other side. Use, and Uber Eats got nothing out of the sound barrier. This is easily best case scenario for the Hornets right now. Yes, as now Point coming back for the side of Shenandoah. I am very excited to see what sort of play style going forward is going to happen as now Lucio with his ultimate up. I'm very worried while these ultimates are available. We have seen UT Dallas does a great job of controlling these points. Uh -huh. It's going to be a matter of now can they really make the most of it Perfect. as the Lucio ult goes down. And Lucio ult will, but so does Ben. Sustain, not nearly enough. Voidex getting peak checked around the center of the point. Last chance of standing would be that app matrix. Yeah, there's just not enough players for the Hornets to stand behind it. UT Dallas, they're going to get that flip back over Shenandoah with one last chance. Yeah, you're going to need to run back as fast as you can. We're not seeing any character swaps from the side of SU. Nothing to try and get a hold of that point, even for just a second. So it looks like they are all going to try and play together, go for this flank on the opposite side. But will they be enough? Oh no, the boop at the end. Ben had it in his sights, but Uber Eats said, nah, -uh, this one belongs to us. Now the UTD taking the first point, but Kevin, this isn't at all what we expected to see today. No, because when you have a superstar team like UT Dallas, who is in this top 10, top 20 top seated spot mm -hmm. against Shenandoah University, who has shown exceptional skill and the ability to keep up, you do need to give respect to your elders, to those <laughs> seated above you. But SU doing a great job of saying, we are not going down without a fight. And so as we move into this next round, I'm noticing there's still two Reinhardts on the field. I'm here for it. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm here for it. This is the Shenandoah Classic composition. Reinhardt Symmetra May. This is how they made their run in the fall NACE 2023 season. And they're looking to do it here once again. The Symmetra gets them to the objective first, allowing these turrets to go down and giving Sacred End an advantage with these May walls. Again, they don't have the damage difference. Pedal and Puggo on Bastion and Torbor respectively is a ton of poke. And you'll notice how low Ben's health bar goes as a result. And as soon as that chip damage goes in, it's for players like Derpy going on in. Yes, swing the hammer a couple times. They all fall down. And UTD are get the first cap. Yeah, Ben and Voidex going down very early in that fight. And the rest just following suit like a domino chain. It's a matter of really, again, understanding who your targets are. We saw that Shenandoah was Ooh. very split throughout all of this, but as they get ready for this next go around, okay. Sacred End is on the Genji. Is that on the Genji, Voidex on the Bastion? Which will certainly help with the damage issue. Derpy now under significantly more pressure, so he's gonna have to be more careful about where he's playing, and as a result, UTD as a whole will have to back off. Once these wheels cooldowns are off the table, though, it's going to be time to strike. I mean, Voidex goes down before that's even an opportunity in the playbook. Derpy continues the march on forward. Cherry and Sacred End doing their best to trade it out. In fact, the Ninja ends up getting two off the tail end. It's just not enough for the Hornets to push in. Yeah, Sacred End doing a great job of making the best out of a bad situation while Shenandoah again loses a couple of their players a little too early. We do see him doing a good job of playing around, playing these scrappy fights at a distance, and then going in for the kill, only to just dash away. That's all you need. If mm -hmm. you're going to play scrappy, you can, but you need to commit to the bit. <gasps> oh no, that that's unfortunate. I mean, Ben doesn't even get to the fight before UTD just say, oh, what, what happened to the tank? The tank went off the map, and unfortunately, Reinhardt has not learned how to swim yet. <laughs> Thankfully, Shoshana, uh, they still have a little time. One more battle. It's got to be a good one. Yeah, I would be surprised if Reinhardt could swim with all that armor. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> but 
as we see, again, ultimates up on the side of UT Dallas. I wouldn't be surprised if we see them go down now. Bitter. Someone's got to get onto this point, Molly. I don't know if it's going to happen. You should be able to get the point. You saw the Ant Matrix with Cherry on the high ground, and you just set players like Voidex behind it. I mean, Kevin, that's a recipe for success right there. The wipe UTD at the last minute, and now they're going to have to fully cap this objective flawlessly. Oh, it's a dangerous game you're playing, but it's very doable. We've seen this before on the Shenandoah broadcast, and so if it's going to happen again, it's going to be a matter of keeping an eye on Ben and seeing which target he's calling for and really keeping up this pressure as we do see up in the distance a little oh bit of no. a Genji flank. A oh, bit of a Genji flank in Shenandoah. They need to get that set up quickly. They are down. They are hurting. But UTD, their health bars are even lower. They're fully committed. It's an utter bloodbath on the objective. There's just slightly more kill feed of blue than there is red. Widex sending in the artillery strike from above. Maybe it forces them back with no body on the objective, the Hornets are forced to forfeit Lijiang Tower. Yeah, UTD doing an amazing job of really showing why they deserve this seating spot, why mm -hmm. they command this presence. Again, this is a character that we were not <laughs> expecting to see, and he's getting player of the game. Like, that is... I mean, this is beautiful. Yeah, I mean... Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, it, it's taste of what Reinhardt can do. It, it goes back to the point, Kevin, is the meta isn't set. If you are good at one thing, you can make it happen. And Shenandoah, they ended up facing a mirror matchup that, I mean, honestly, you could be expecting, knowing where UTD's strengths typically are. While they didn't come out on top of it, there's a lot of great things that they can take away and apply to future games. I'm curious, at this point, we know that Shenandoah is incredibly comfortable with Reinhardt. They have been mm -hmm. for years. But are we in an experimental, enough of an experimental setting to try and change it up? Because it wasn't yeah. bad. No. Shenandoah did a good job of con getting control of the point. They just were a little bit off with who they were targeting and making sure that they were keeping up with the tempo. But as we see, it's all a matter of, do you think that the play is sticking with the Reinhardt or going with something different? I, generally, Kevin, it's going to depend on what map that Shenandoah end up picking. We know what they have liked to go with in the past. And if we're thinking that direction, which I'm not going to say any names yet, okay. uh, we're not seeing a Reinhardt. I will flat out tell you that now. But if we do end up going to our good old friend King's Row, we could very well see this again. And I wouldn't hate that for the Hornets. This isn't a composition that they're unfamiliar with. In fact, it's the one they're the most familiar with. UT Dallas, though, just has a little bit more experience playing it at a higher level. And it's moments like these where it started to show. I want to use this first fight as an example. As they played their time, they waited out for the turrets to be destroyed, for Sacred End's wall to go up, allow Petal to burn through Ben's shield, and then eventually there was no cooldowns left, and all it takes is a good old hammer to squish him down to size, and you've got the point. Yeah, and look at how wall... Ben and Voidex do go down here. Sacred yeah. End doing a great job, again, of playing this sort of scrappy fight. Mm -hmm. And that is the kind of thing that really can control the pace <laughs> of the game. But when you got Lucio doing a little bit of a boop action, mm -hmm. it's, it's the kind of thing that you need to be worried about. Yeah, and, and Shenandoah, they know that. They want to play this composition where they're comfortable. Even if some players have shifted around to new roles, as in Ben being on tank and King Kong Poppy taking up the role of this Lucio. It is an adjustment nonetheless, but clearly one that doesn't make them entirely uncomfortable. They've gone away from their traditional pick of Pararizo, and instead will be heading back to the rainy streets of Britain for King's Row. King's Row is the type of map that I feel like I see a ton <laughs> until I don't. You're not wrong. <laughs> um, it's, it feels like a comfort situation. And again, in an environment of trying new things, I feel like having this level of comfort can be used in your advantage where suddenly you have a very solid understanding of what you want in certain pathways, in certain avenues. And because of that, I wouldn't be surprised if they do try to mix it up a little bit mm -hmm. with what sort of game plan they have going forward yeah. because that level of comfort on King's Row, 
it transitions no matter who you're playing. <laughs> you, you actually bring up a very valid point in King's Row. While we view it back in the good old days of Overwatch, of the <laughs> Reinhardt, the Zarya, the May, I mean, it, it, classic, right? It's not that case anymore. There is no second tank, and Reinhardt is not a must pick. You can very well play dive. There is wiggle room on this map, whether people decide to believe it or not. And both the Comets and the Horns have the option to change their composition should they want to. Do we expect that? Absolutely oh, not. The man. only difference that we will see, UT Dallas, their DPS line, a little bit different. Pugo now mirroring the May that we saw from Sacred and Petal on the Hanzo. And with this, you have huge damage potential and for these isolations onto Ben. Key point that they're missing though, there's no Lucio. Doyi picking up the Yardi, which yes, incredible damage output, but on a composition that relies on speed and taking these rushes, you gotta switch that up. And it's gonna result in some players being late to the fight. Yes, as now we do see the Ooh. healers picked and Reinhardt okay. jumping in from the top ropes. <laughs> I'm very curious to see how this plays out. We are seeing the Genji and the Bastion again from the side of Shenandoah. I do think they felt that level of success on the last map. Yep. And I wouldn't be surprised if we do see Sacred End look for a bit more skirmishing. The problem is, is that this beginning section is so incredibly narrow that you really Ooh, do need wall. to keep track of your options as now we do see Bastion going all in in the third form. And you say options, but what options do UTD add? They use the Immortality Field, and Speed, Mangle. I mean, that's all their big cooldowns out in one. Shenandoah now are in a much better position, but unfortunately they themselves didn't have the health and pedal on an incredible flank will kill you to the end of two of their players. But Shenandoah, they're not done yet. They could care less if they're down in a 3v3 because they made it even and they're about to make it even less so. These players, they're split and separated. Ben, eyes low in health though. UT Dallas are able to regroup just enough, but not to the point where Shenandoah feel uncomfortable continuing to push in this exact same situation. I mean, Sacred and wonderful kill on to Pugo. The Maywall's no longer an issue. The Hanzo, very much so. Sacred End identifies that. We'll have to contest him one way or another. Only one tick has been gained so far, and Shenandoah still struggling to stay alive with their health. Yeah, there's still a Genji in the back line right now for the side of Shenandoah, who's been doing a great job of really dancing around alive. the opponent. But now, as he's the last one alive, just goes down and Shenandoah now having to regroup with only one of the three checkpoints. I do really like what we saw. Absolutely. It's unfortunate for Shenandoah that UT Dallas did have that Hanzo flank on the same side as Sacred End was going for the same. But when you are in a battle of doing the same action, whoever pulls the trigger first is the fastest or is the one who wins. So as we go into this next fight, I wouldn't be surprised if we see more of the same. Uh, it was a big fight for Shenandoah, committing both the Earth Shatter and the Dragon Blade, but even more coming out of UT Talus. That cost them one, two, three, four ultimates on their side just to hold off Shenandoah. And in the long game here, this is something that can come back to bite UTD very, very badly. You have nothing to counteract a window. I mean, the sound barrier probably going to go towards Pugo's Blizzard, uh, but right now, Shenandoah, they know they're up in the ultimate economy. UTD easily overexpent, and now Petal being on this tracer without even a greater deficit. They're going to get towards the objectives, and they need to avoid getting frozen up with the Blizzard. Most of the players were able to escape, or at least trade it out to a point where it's not as devastating to lose one or two throughout. Cherry taking up the role of a DPS support, stealing the deal for the end of the Derpy and UT Dallas surely will crumble after the loss of a tank player such as this. This was an incredible push that we've seen from Shenandoah, but they're not out of the fire yet. They need to keep pushing all the way forwards. Petal is one of the best tracers you are going to find in Collegia. And if this isn't dealt with soon, even if they have the objective, it's going to become a problem. Yes, I do love how Shenandoah played that fight because you have the blizzard in your face and when you have it right on the objective, it's the kind of thing that so many players have to show respect for and really take a step back. But Shenandoah doing a great job of dancing around it mm -hmm. and keeping control of the point. So now as the payload begins to move, I hope to see a little bit more of that as we do see 
Reinhardt taking control of the point, but the fight begins to break out as Genji's in the top right. That was a huge hit of damage that we saw go out on Polo, but instead it's Edel that is on the right side of the kill feed. Shenandoah, now the thorn of their side, has been removed, and they've gotten through the most difficult choke in the entirety of the map. Free sailing from here on out, UTD. They're on the backwards trend. They know that if they get staggered now, a future push is going to be darn near impossible. Yet Shenandoah, they are yet to get through the bookstore, which is another big part of contestion. As it continues to move up, the Ant Matrix may help the fight on the main ground, where Sacred then is busy dealing with these pesky little flankers. Pulse Bomb thrown out just a little bit wide there. Look at these supports <laughs> working with the Genji right now! The teamwork, the synergy, Shenandoah, they have all of their basers covered, ready to push forward, and it takes a major ultimate that puts one to an end, and even that isn't going to be enough. UT Dallas very much in a losing battle, and it's about to be even more so. Earthshatter laid down, bends a little bit later, so it's going to grab more value you. Sacred end there to slice and dice, cut everyone else back down to size. What a change in momentum. Sends his first objective, Kevin. Oh my goodness. Again, Shenandoah does it where the Blizzard is on the point and so much pressure is put on to them. But then they do a great job of dancing around. You have Genji and Lucio dancing around, keeping up the pressure, even though the Blizzard is there, and suddenly one good ultimate is what Beautiful. you need. Playing so patient and understanding what your win condition is, as now the payload is just barely out of reach from this point. A few meters, all that remains, until this final objective shall hit home. Shenandoah, not really any big ultimates to use, but who needs that? He got big old damage in the quality of Voidex. My goodness, that Bastion switch has been playing out in dividends, but you can't understand enough the value that Sacred End has been getting on this Genji. I mean, contesting the high ground. Petal has now swapped to their fourth hero of the game. Oh that doesn't uh, tell you what Sacred End is doing. I mean, UT Dallas, they can't quite tell you either. They don't know what to play. Yeah, and with a character with an ultimate that takes so much to charge, it feels like they're really on the back foot and need something Ooh. to really cut down the time, but you need to be playing around your ultimates as now oh, Reinhardt yeah. is beaten down against the other side of the Reinhardt. Oh my goodness, both Woo players with the pin. Yeah, both with the pin there, not having Sacred End though, that's going to be a really tough one. That means Petal goes uncontested and Petal is one of the best hit scan players you are going to find within Collegiate. Has been around contenders and top of the Collegiate for quite some time and you're going to see just why you're committing the entirety of Sacred End to making his life difficult. If that Ash is left uncontested, there's no room for Shenandoah to be able to work. Now having a lot of these ultimates online, they spot Pug away off on the high ground. That's a wall. We'll lean the end towards Ben, and that's just going to halt the push right there. Yeah, Ben taken down, but so was Pugo. But you mentioned it. When you have the option between your offensive and your tank, it's, uh, it's a pretty rough trade yeah. to take. Yeah. So while Shenandoah does have the ultimate advantage going into this, that Ash ultimate Blade? that I was talking about before is something you want to keep your eyes on because it can stall this game Ooh. for just enough. Yeah, but stalling with an ultimate such as Dragon Blade isn't ideal. That's one that you at least want to force a support ultimate and you don't get it. But good news, Derpy didn't get it either. The guy is dead. And now with all those ultimates coming out later in the fight, Shenandoah, they're already up. You have no big old rectangle to stand behind. No, no, no. Voidex and Sacred End can hit these shots as they are needed. That isn't to say Petal can't do the same. 15 seconds now on the clock to push this one on forwards. And I once again cannot understate what Petal will do if he is left by himself. That's three players down to his name. And this is where the push shall stop. Kevin, Shenandoah. Even if they didn't get the full completion here, you have to be proud of this accomplishment. I mean, we talked about it earlier. Again, you can respect someone who is written down as being one of the best, but that doesn't mean that you can't show them what you're made of. <laughs> Shenandoah doing a great job of keeping up the pressure, keeping up the push, and now as we swap sides, it's going to be a matter of can they control that first point for a longer period of time. I think that's where we will see the major difference is more so on that first objective before the payload starts to move. Mm -hmm. yeah, you need to set a tempo, right? And Shenandoah, 
in order to have a successful defense, you need to communicate with each other. You need to identify where the attackers are and decide how you are properly going to counter it out. With a composition, they're not changing anything. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Great choice going on forwards. And I want to hear more of this. I don't know if you were, you could hear them in the background, Kevin, but you could hear them. Like, yeah. they were like, May, 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 get that right here. Like, that's that's what we need. We need this team to be excited. We need them to be loud. When they are like that, these are the great things that they can do. Push a payload farther than anybody would have expected them to do on a map of this type. Show us the same thing on the defense. We know that they have it in them. It's just a matter of the execution. Yeah, and while we do see the same team from the side of Shenandoah, UT Dallas has a couple, or uh, one yeah. particular uh, character that's yeah. not seen yet so far, the Junkrat coming in. I'm a little curious to see how this is going to disrupt what Shenandoah is going to be playing for. But as we do see this begin, again, a nice uh -oh. little scrap around the statue. Scrap around the statue, Ben, though. A little bit too far beyond the reaches of Cherry, and that's where this big burst damage comes into play. Pedal maybe on the rats, and you just can't ignore the huge burst of damage that the rat can output, and Dorpy pins in. And Shenandoah, they got a little bit too aggressive. They bit off more than they could chew. They've been punished for it, sure, but if you're going to try to set up a defense, a stagger here on a sacred end is not going to be the best way to have that start. Yes, as now more time <laughs> added to the clock, but Sacred End. He's in end. there spawning. Yeah, he's having a good time. He's enjoying <laughs> life, <all> just <laughs> making sure. <laughs> Wait, does he live through this? There's yeah. no way. He lives through this. <laughs> he's getting back to the team, Kevin. How did this happen? There are multiple ways to knock down a timer to really kill the clock. And I got to say, this is, uh, this is one of the one. unique ones that I've seen. He's uh, still behind him. Like, he oh doesn't care. Lord. He doesn't care. He knows if he can get him. That's a mortality field out. That's a major ability! And finally, he's jumping down. Okay. The, the, the Genji is not invincible. There is nothing wrong with the game today. It bought some time off the clock and time that is going to be much needed, noting there are still five minutes there for UT Dallas just to move through our streets phase. Shenandoah did their best in stalling, but are going to have to get a full regroup before they re-engage. I, I think I just heard uh, Void X and Sacred End chuckling behind me. I think they knew that <laughs> they, they knew. got away with something that they probably shouldn't. <laughs> But this is the kind of thing that you have to say. I mean, if you're going to go for a win, you might as well try something new. That's the name of the game this week, right? Mm -hmm. Is try strategies that may seem a little bit out there. And so with that, we do see that UT Dallas's Ryan Hart has that ultimate stored up as well as Junkrat beginning to build Hi. it up. I would be ready for this bomb in just a second as the fight begins to break out. Bastion just letting bullets fly. Earth Shatters couldn't be the name of this fight, unless Pedal, of course, decides to rip the tire out first. Ben has gotten dipped on the couple Earth Shatters so far, and I know that he's not going to let that stop him again. Pride the guy has been hurt, and he's going to look to be the difference maker. Once again, I'm off guard, but an incredible reaction time! Oh, there's only one person that can pull that off, and it is Derby. Ben did everything right in his playbook. Unfortunately, everyone from UTD, they are still standing right now. That rip tire just blew Shenandoah to bits. And now they're going to have to bunker down for a long hold on the foundry. Yes, and it's the kind of play that you have to respect. It's a, when you're in that situation where both players have their best tool available and suddenly one of you has to make the move first, it's, it's almost a fighting game at that point of who's going to make the right call beforehand <laughs> as suddenly we do see... What is <laughs> Uber Eats is... Okay. I mean, Uber Eats gets out. All right. All right. We're, we're playing Skater Boy. I, I totally get it. Have fun with that, UTD, because you're not going to have fun much longer. That's the blade. They can coming out the sheet, but no! It's a pedal headshot followed by the melee to the back of the head. Sacred End knew that was the win condition that Shenandoah had to rely on. It's gone. It's down the drain. And now they're only going to have about one more opportunity to halt this cart. Oh, what a dangerous game you're playing. And now, as we do see, you got four minutes to kill. It's very, very difficult, but it is so incredibly doable as now the players are on respawn and the point is beginning to move. We can see the highlighted spot. It's going to be a matter of just getting close and really keeping up this pressure, finding your flank as we do see Sacred End go in. Sacred End goes in, but it was the Earth Shatter that was the play of the day. Well, that one might have been blocked. The Damage 
was just too much into the shield. Pedal now back onto this Anzo. Heads flying off re right, left, and center, leading to a second UTD map win. I mean, that was incredibly well played by UTD. I mentioned it earlier that you really do need the ability to kill the time, but when you have such an oppressive game, yeah. such a commanding presence at all times, it's not easy to do, and because they were able to get that momentum early on, I think it really made a difference going forward and keeping up that pressure. Yeah, and it's not necessarily even something that Shenandoah was doing wrong. They found themselves on the losing end of an ultimate economy that by the time they actually managed to recover it, Kevin, it was too little, too late. UTD's ult management was out of this world, allowing them to win, I believe it was about four fights back to back to back. And when they're allowed to do things such as that, I mean, you're just at the mercy of your opponent. You're staggered in. You're having a difficult time finding an engaging tool, and uh, you're, you're going to get run over. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not to understate it, though. I mean, Shenandoah did incredible on this attack and really does show their potential going ahead. Yeah, and the other thing I want to yeah. acknowledge, Sacred End. Oh, I yeah. Mean, oh, yeah. It's the kind of... He did such a great job of really demanding respect from the side of UT Dallas, keeping the players split to the best of his ability. And really, I mean, you could see it. There's a reason why he's in so many of these replays is because he was doing such a great yeah. job of really dancing around what these opponents had to offer. But at the same time, <laughs> you need to keep up this pressure. Shenandoah unable mm -hmm. to get the point to that last bit, time running down. But at the same time, again, UT Dallas doing such a great job of just really keeping pressure together and forcing this sort of team play. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I really enjoyed watching Sacred End just kind of like dance yeah. around for the longest period of time. Like he's, yeah. he's in their base. <laughs> it's out here looking like my like solo queue games <laughs> and stuff like that. Like, why are you there? <laughs> like, why are you there? Why are you allowed to do this? And you know, there's not many players that can get away with it, and it doesn't even mention. I mean, Sacred End is an incredibly smart player, and there's a reason that he's a coach as well. He's mm -hmm. coached this team to a top 32 spot within the country at one point, and, and now has been regrouping with a different roster this season and uh, against some of the best teams that you're going to find within Collegiate Overwatch. And it, he's doing it in such a way that he's almost leading without leading, right? He's mm -hmm. giving Ben the tools to guide the team forwards as that tank while he's like, hey, I got this, I'll take care of it. And the rest of the team can follow suit because of this incredible level of trust you have in this player between his experience and of course, his insane game knowledge. Yes, and look at what all Shenandoah has done. The score may be 2-0, mm -hmm. but I mentioned it at the beginning of this broadcast, I was hungry to see action and <laughs> I have been satisfied, but it's not over yet. We have one more round at the very least on the map, Sura. Suravasa? <laughs> Suravasa! You said it correct. Yeah. It's a fun one. We've been getting a lot of New Junk City. I always have this argument with Ben of like, is cool. Look at all the fun colors that you have in this Mac. I see some pink, some purples, blues, and reds. Awesome. New Junk City, it's like dust yeah. and brown and orange. Who wants that? I like color, all right? Give me some color in my <laughs> life. Thank you, Shenandoah, for agreeing with that opinion. So we will be going to this map uh, for the first time in a hot minute. So with Surabasa being the pick, there aren't too many big differences between this and New Junk City other than comfort necessarily. So this is the map where we could see a genuine composition change with the way that Shenandoah have been running. It's not looked bad, but they are just lacking an X factor to push them over the top when it comes to meeting UTD head on. You lean into Sacred End on this Genji, cool, but your front line has less power. You give them the Bash and you give them the Symmetra, that's great, but who's gonna deal with the Ash? Who's gonna deal with the Tracer? And it's all of these little things that you want to try to iron out and read out from the comments as you get ready to head into what could be your final lap. Yes, and with that, I do... <laughs> there's one highlight for me for this map, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh -huh. Shenandoah is, has a very good Lucio player. Yep. And I believe this map, I've seen them 
have a lot of very funny boop plays off of the map on way too many occasions. Again, me in the back, I've been on the clips just one after another. I don't know. It could be. <laughs> It would be something wild. You're, you're not wrong, though. Suravasa does have a lot of potential for environmental eliminations. And traditionally, that is that Lucio player, which I'm glad you bring this up, Kevin, because I actually just wanted to talk about this. King Kong Poppy moving over from this Baptiste. That's mainly where Cherry, her hero pool is. He's taking over this Lucio position, which is one of the most difficult heroes to run within team play because you are literally just you're pulling out your pom-poms, you're cheering everybody on forwards with your speed boost. You are deciding where you go, how fast you can get there, while simultaneously playing one of the most mechanically difficult characters in the game. And he has stepped up wonderfully to the occasion and was a big part of the reason Sacred End has been able to do as much as he has. And we're really gonna start to see here the separation of these teams. So keep an eye on where King Kong Poppy is going to be as we unroll into Flashpoint. Yes, I do love a good Lucio player because you can really see what all Overwatch has to offer when it comes to your mobility, your control of an area, because that is the name of the game for Lucio. You really have this control of whether or not you're healing up your character or you're going as fast as you can, but also truly understanding what, what, situ what the situation calls for. Yep. There are so much that can go into any fight, and that's just one ability. You have so much more, and it's over time. Mm -hmm. That's the dangerous bit, is that the heal wall over time, while yes, it can be amplified and all of that, it means you gotta stay alive. It means you gotta dance. It oh, means yeah. you, have to, <laughs> like, you have to have happy feet, and that is not easy in shooter-type games, but we see it with these types of players that when you get to a certain level, it becomes difficult to deal with. And you're just at this expectation that you have to pick up these heroes so quickly, even with the meta constantly shifting, you, your team may need a new role, right? For you to go in and fill. And these players have done an excellent job meeting that thus far. And we saw, we've seen the growing pains with some of these adjustments, right? But every time that we see this team on stage, like there's one less thing that I'm like, hmm, not really sure what happened there. And every time it gets cleaner it looks better and this match against utd by far the closest that they have had and for very good reason they're playing coordinated we're hearing them calming they're on the same page and look where it's able to get them to these lengths this is one of the first nap threes that we're going into we're saying that shenandoah they may be down too but they are still up in spirits and ready to take what utd has to offer and again, looking at the team comps, they're a lot of the same with a couple of small differences on the side of the attacking characters. While we still have the Bash and while we still have the Meg, both players opting for the McCree and the um, Blanket. Uh, the Cassidy and the Meg, so right. on the side of UTD. Shenandoah, though, we got a Sojourn and Bastion. High levels of damage output, which is pretty good for the fact that you have a tank alive, which uh, Ben got turned into a pancake so early <laughs> on, and Sacred End and Voidex didn't have the opportunity to set up. So it will be a pretty quick reset with that tank going down, but also forces UTD to make a change of their own. Yes, Shenandoah, unfortunately, having losing been so early, getting control of that point is going to be crucial because when you're playing a character like Reinhardt and you're able to demand so much space, this is what you want. You want to have the initial Jeez. as he Derpy. comes down. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't think the guy has an S key bound. Like, I'm genuinely convinced. I mean, the S key, for those of you uh, non mouse and keyboard players out there, that's what makes you go backwards. Uh, Derpy doesn't go backwards. It's only forwards until he's dead. And when you're playing a Reinhardt composition, you are forcing your opponent backwards. And when Shenandoah, they have to walk into that, they either can try to hold their ground or you're just at the mercy of Derpy feeling like everything's a nail. I love the name Derpy. I feel like <laughs> when you don't have, when you're not able to walk backwards and just say, you know what? We're going to be playing this Derpy style and just run at your opponent. That <laughs> I mean, is oh, the way to go. 
Uh, uh, yeah, like you're walking into an Earth Shatter. DTD have been in control of this objective, so we'll have that ultimate advantage. Shenandoah, yeah, you're gonna get a flip back over on the point. A uh, little bit of a sneaky play from our resident Lucio King Kong. A poppy, yet uh, ten percent. All that the Hornets are going to take off of this one. You'll notice that Flashpoint, an incredibly snowball type game mode where you win one objective, it's very difficult to come back into it again. So Shenandoah must use the tools at their disposal to pull out a point win. Yeah, Sacred End again, switching back to the Genji. And while we have seen a lot of success with it so far, this map seems very narrow in certain areas. And I do worry that while you're going to be dancing around, you have Reinhardt <laughs> just slapping people again. Where's the where's the SQ? I don't get it. <laughs> How do you I, do I, it? I don't think Hickok Poppy got it either. Like, he was in there. He had a plan. He's like, hey, guys, I'm going to go contest the objective. And then he turns around and says, wait, my team's dead. What do I do? Like, you could see the confusion on his, on his character right there. And, and uh, UTD is so dang aggressive. They're setting the temple. Pedal is to the metal. Shenandoah, it's their turn to do the same. Earth Shatter laid down. A ground pedal. Perfect usage of that ultimate. But you need to turn it into more and more importantly, Ben has to stay on his feet. But no. Oh, the damage output just simply too great. UTD were ready for that engagement. Shenandoah's initiative wasn't enough. Hugo swapped to Genji and I am fascinated because the character mm -hmm. has been doing so much for the side of Shenandoah but at the same time I'm curious what UT Dallas is going to do with the character as now that that ultimate is oh. up. <laughs> okay. Hey, that, that's how you punish Derpy. He's like, hey, if you can't make the guy sit, all right. You make him lay on his back and you shred him through an application matrix. All right. That's a message to send to the tank player and one that the Hornets are going to make sure he's going to feel when he comes back to contest the objective. All right. You have your answer. Now, can you do it again? <laughs> because uh, we have seen the aggression come out from the side of Derpy. But oh, no. no. The Bastion ulti. Able Big. to go and be used, but then the derby said, I'm around this corner, you're not allowed to sit here, and goes for the hammer, and suddenly Shenandoah is in this awkward spot, but is able to regain and still has control of the point, and that's what, what? you really oh, want. Oh, 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 oh. Sneaky. Sneaky. Oh, my goodness. He's going to pin him. He's going to wait for them to come in, and he's going to pin them. Oh, oh but they're going the other way. Oh, that is so unfortunate. Ben had such a great plan, but oh, UTD must have seen it coming, and we'll never know what could have happened. And, uh, we might know what happens soon. Ben able to sneak around the corner back into the lines of the Immortality Field. Has another Earth Shatter online. And assuming Sacred End goes down here, you're going to need it sooner rather than later. He ended up getting a hit, but it was only eight, nothing but shield. Derpy came back in to save their Bastion at a critical moment. And now with UTD back in control, not a player from the Hornets in sight. It's looking to be a reverse sweep here for the Flashpoint map. And a very unfortunate fight for the side of SU because Ben was able to get his ultimate at full charge during that fight but immediately uses it, and it doesn't get the value that was needed. And because of that, you're going into this third point without your Reinhardt ulti, and it's staggered <laughs> against Derpy. That is such a dangerous game to be playing when you have seen the pressure that they have put on. You know what else is dangerous? Playing with some knives or a whole dang katana if you are Sacred End right now. Went in with the Dragon Blade when UTD weren't expecting it. They were terrible with their ultimate management in the previous fight. Used that sound barrier and their def ant matrix. So that was a battle they had to expect to lose. Yes. Now, UT Dallas is able to bring it back where they're starting to walk out of this bomb point and Shenandoah, while having control, is going to have to play this game now. We've seen <laughs> oh all my. Ben's in! Ben's in and he got him! Oh, that's one! The squished bug out against the wall. Sure, he's gonna pay for it with his life, but my goodness, Kevin, that's such a happy thing to see. Trades in favor of the Hornets, no tank on either side. You get the point, you're fine. Yeah, and Ben, I mean, <laughs> we, we've been seeing it from Derpy. I've He's been taken on the spirit Derpy. of Derpy. Yeah. <laughs> Is that suddenly Ben said, wait, what if I unbind my SP? <laughs> and then suddenly it works. <laughs> and so now Shenandoah is beginning to hit control back of this game while they do have to take a step back and get Ben back into this fight. <gasps> Big. 
I mean, that's that Puckle down, went in with the Dragon Blade. Kevin, I mean, this is best case scenario. That was UT Dallas. That was their fight to win. That was one, two, three ultimates that they put out, and none of them got any value. All it took was the perfectly timed sound barrier of King Kong Poppy, and suddenly their dreams are very much alive. Oh, my goodness. Shenandoah with the potential to bring this back. I think we're seeing the value of getting your Reinhardt in position around this point first, as now SU is the one who has that control to start this. Can they keep it once this point unlocks and the Bastion ultimate is coming down? Yeah, the artillery strike raining down from above, looking for Doi. Will manage to escape that one, but no, into the back line, Doi, you're not safe yet until the Reinhardt says so. The Earth Shatter, sure, that gets nothing, but my goodness, was it worth it? Well, UTE all turned around to look at what Ben was doing, like, what's going on here? Well, guess what, Shenandoah, they pounce on that opportunity, and they're back in control, at least temporarily. They haven't cleared the field entirely yet. Sacred End has to stay alive, Dragon Blade in hand, yet it appears that she'll stay in the sheath for the time being. Derpy gets back just a little little faster than we see from Ben, so he's gonna have to force his way off of the objective. Terry doing her best to keep it alive, but shut down the tactical visor! You can't even beat her with aimbot on board, Pedal! My goodness, that was quite a fight, even if they ended up losing in the end. Yes. Reinhardt is in control of what the map has now because we see Derpy is the one able to come out on top, able to get there first, and again, we're seeing the value of Reinhardt's positioning and not having that SP because suddenly <laughs> it's all a matter of really keeping up that pressure game as Derpy's ultimate is starting to back up. We probably won't see an ultimate from Ben, but we Ooh. do see Sacred End doing his as now dashing in, dashing out, saying, all right, maybe I've Maybe I pulled the trigger a little too early. Let's take a second to regroup. Yeah, so the sound barrier got out. That's a trade you're willing to take. That, on the other hand, is a bit questionable. Ben took a very aggressive charge, attempting to go ahead, get a switch on out. But uh, realistically, Kevin, this could be the last fight for Shenandoah. And losing Ben at such a late manner could be absolutely devastating here. They get wiped quickly, and it seems that Baby Sacred End can get on back, but they're pushing up to the spawns. There's no chance the ninja makes it to the objective. As valiant of an effort as it was, the Hornets end up falling to UTD. Oh, that hurts. That oh. hurts a little bit. I still loved what I saw today, but it really it great. is a matter of who has control first, and when you have such a commanding presence like we see from Derby and really keeping up that pressure game, that is what wins games. And so while SU does go down mm -hmm. again for the third round, it wasn't without a fight. It mm -hmm. wasn't a sweep. And I think that's what Sacred End is hoping for. Again, you mentioned it earlier, bringing this team on and really building them up, sh showing them the ropes and saying, I may not be around for too much longer. Yep. You're going to need to carry on this torch, and this is how you do it. I'll show you the starting steps. I'll get you into the door and show you what you need to do. It's up to you to really bring it forward. Yeah. And Kevin, this isn't what Shenandoah thought was going to be played today. Mm -hmm. The information that we were talking about at the beginning of the stream with these wrecking balls, these tracers, I wasn't spitting this off the top of my head. This is what the coach told me they'd been practicing. This is what they were planning to run. But UTD completely changed the game and suddenly, all that practice you've been putting in, you can't pull it out anymore. You have to play into this mirror matchup that perhaps you're pulling a little off the back burner. And in events like this, where UTD is most known for having this killer style of Reinhardt Rush, then it's quite a name that you have to live up to. And I don't want Shenandoah to be upset with this loss. This is the best looks that we've seen from them all season. And it proves the hard work that they've been putting in to their game has really gotten them to a better place. You have to respect it. It's yeah. as simple as that. And so with all of that being said, I am looking forward to seeing again what all Shenandoah will come up with going forward. Mm -hmm. While we did hear one strategy this week, will we see it again next week? We, we don't know. We never know. Yeah. <laughs> I Beauty hope. Yeah. I hope that 
we do solidify on a strategy. I do think there was a little bit almost of a handshake. I think at any yeah. point, the tanks could have swapped and made the game flip on its head and really tried to change up the game plan. But when you have two players who seem so comfortable <laughs> with the characters that they play, can you really be upset at them when when the whole game changes, push comes to shove, they just play what they love? Like, I don't know, I can't get mad at that. No, you can't. And, you know, Shenandoah did, did their absolute best today. And despite some of the circumstances, and they may not have won a match yet this year, every game that we see them on stream, it's bits of improvement that we get to witness from a growing squad. And Kevin, the season isn't even halfway over. So much more left to see from this team. And not only do we get to see them, we get to hear from them as well. I have word our tank player, Ben, will be joining us here on the desk momentarily. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back with an interview. Shots on the good old cowboy and continue to do it. Shenandoah are able to walk back in and just look how much Cherry is pumping the heels into Ben. Eventually, he shouts their own window. It's a nice Maywall placed at their backs. First shatter almost online. Ben has to stay alive. And it's another incredibly aggressive pin from our good friend Derby. On the yeah. That is going to be the big advantage that they need as this boxing begins. On the two Zell, the two Earth shatters. And it will be Derby's hammer. Still. <laughs> I mean, Ben's going right in. Want to give Derpy taste of own medicine, and they're just throwing it up into a popsicle. I mean, should it but will they be enough? Oh no, the boot! But the end, Ben had it in his sights. But or more respectively, is a ton of hope. And you'll notice how low Ben's health bar goes as a result. And as soon as that chip damage goes in, it's for players like Derpy going on in. Yes, significantly more pressure. So he's going to have to be more careful about where he's playing. And as a result, UTD as a whole will have to back off. Once these wheels cooldowns are off the table, though, it's going to be time to strike. Boy, that goes down before. That's even an opportunity in the playbook. Derpy continues the march on forward. Cherish and Sacred End doing their best to trade it out. And back. But you need to commit to the bit. <gasps> oh, no. That. This point, Molly. I don't know if it's going to happen. Should be able to get the point. You saw the ant matrix with Cherry on the high ground, and you just sent players like Voidek, but unfortunately, they themselves didn't have the health and pedal on an incredible flank. It's going to the end of two of their players. And you know what? They're not done yet. They even a greater deficit. They're going to get towards the objectives. They need to avoid getting frozen up in the blizzard. Most of the players were able to escape or at least trade it out to a point where it's not as devastating. Where Sager then is busy dealing with these pesky little flankers. Pulse bomb thrown out just a little bit wide there. Look at these supports working with the Genji right now. The team Sager then there to slice and dice. Cut everyone else back down to size. What a change in momentum. Sense his first objective, Kevin. Oh my goodness, again. Shenandoah, not really any big ultimates to use, but who needs that? He got big old damage. And no, Voidex and Sacred End can hit these shots as they are needed. That isn't to say, Pedal can't do the same. 15 seconds now on the clock to push this one on forwards, and I once again cannot understate what Pedal will do if he lives left by himself. That's three players down to his name, down to his name, and this is where the push cell stuck. Kevin Shenandoah, even if they didn't get the full completion here, you have to be proud of this accomplishment. I mean, we talked about it earlier. Got you, Ben, though. A little bit too far beyond the reaches of Cherry. And that's where this big burst time it comes into play. Pedal maybe on the rats. And like, he doesn't care. He doesn't care. He knows that he can get him. It's a mortality field out. It's a major ability. And finally, he shows it down. Okay. The, the, the Genji is not on guard, but an incredible reaction time. Oh. Our Shenandoah Overwatch Esports roster has just wrapped up their fourth match of this season in the highest level of NACE Super League competition. While the results may not have been what the team has been hoping for so far, we love seeing this constant improvement from the team. And one of those shining lights has been our tank player, Ben, stepping into a brand new role for this season, taking on one of the more notable Reinhardts in today's <laughs> match. Talk me through. What really went down today? Uh, I thought we played pretty well. Uh, we haven't really played too much of the Ryan comp this semester, which is surprising because mm -hmm. that's the only comp that we played <laughs> last, last semester. True, so very true. We weren't originally planning on playing Ryan today. We load into the lobby. Derpy's like, hey, Ben, Ryan duel? I'm like, sure, <laughs> I got you. But this actually happened. 
Yeah. <laughs> he, we, we loaded into the lobby. He's like, I yo, Ben, want to ride? I how that happened. That's so, awesome, though. Um, I think we played really well for not playing that comp too much this semester. Um, towards the end, it got better. We figured out uh, how to control tempo a bit better, how to play faster. Um, you know, Derby put me on my back a couple times. I did the same to him. Um, and overall, it was just a, a fun match. And, you know, we went back to our roots. Hey, you know, it, it was a good, honest Reinhardt duel. You really can't say anything about that. We were Kevin and I were kind of theorizing, like, you guys were talking so much about this ball tracer dive-esque thing, and then we see Reinhardt come out, and we're like, what is yep. this? So I'm glad that it's question very has been last answered. Minute it's a very last-minute switch. And, um, you know, we, we love that you're down for things like that. But, yeah, I think we all, uh, we all played really well. We all had fun, yeah. which is the most important thing. Uh, yeah. Hey, having fun is pretty darn cool. And it was great to see you being on this tank role, which I know you enjoy yourself, but it's also not the role that we saw you on in mm -hmm. the previous semester. You were that more flex DPS player with that May, occasionally the Genji and Symmetra coming out. So talk me through, what really has that transition been like for you? It was it was definitely difficult at first. Um, in Overwatch 1, I did play a lot, of, a lot of tanks, so it took me a little bit of adjusting back to that tank role and like the the mindset when I'm playing tank. Um, but yeah, overall, it's been a nice adjustment. You know, we lost our, our tank player, Dragonblade X, and we lost a couple of players. Um, but, you know, Sacred End has definitely been putting in a lot of work. Same with Onion Man. Uh, and yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, tank is not an easy role to come into. Not at all. Especially with uh, tanks, typically, you're taking on this leadership role, right? Mm -hmm. You're trying to direct players, plan out the next couple of fights, and it's a lot of weight on your shoulders coming in, especially this This is your first year at yeah. a university on a team. And, uh, you know, it's yes, it is a new thing. Yes, it can look scary, but you've done such a great job going through. And I see you smiling and having fun mm -hmm. with the team at so many different points. Is there, like, one moment? in particular that you really like, man, this team's pretty darn cool. There's been a lot. I really can't think of one moment in particular. Um, last semester, realizing that we made playoffs, the top 32 in the homecoming tournament, uh -huh. was definitely very exciting for me, um, especially just my first semester competing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that's a very understandable. I remember mm -hmm. us all being here like, oh my gosh, they did it. Like it was mm -hmm. such a, a monumental moment for you guys. And yeah. it, it snowballed to that. I mean, you guys qualified for that NACE Super League, had that invitation, mm -hmm. and now here you are scrimming the top teams, the, or excuse me, playing against the top teams of the country like it's absolutely nothing. And, you know, as that season continues to progress, you guys are like looking for that and continuous improvement with that new patch and everything. There's so many question marks up in the air for the remainder of the games that you have. Is there anything in particular that you're looking forward to or looking to continue improving on as the season commences? Uh, one of the biggest things I'm looking forward to right now is we do have the Game Mason land starting on True. Thursday. Uh, and it's going to be our first LAN. Going to go just have fun. Hopefully we can get the second one in a row, but we'll yeah. see how it goes. And, you know, we're looking forward to seeing you guys there. Rocket League team earlier, we were just talking about how valuable LAN experience truly is. And we, we're going to wish you guys the best going Thank on you. forwards into that game, Mason. You guys play like you did today. I mean, high, high expectations for that event in the tournament. And I'm sure, especially with all of those three days of matches coming on up, you're going to have to go back, get with your team and talk about what really the game plan is going to be for them. But before you go, do you have any final last word shout outs that you'd like to make on the desk. Yeah, of course. Um, I guess shout out to my parents. As always, they've been supportive of me playing over the years. And even though at first they were skeptical when I told them, hey, a school offered me a spot to play on their team. Um, I talked to them a bit more about it and then they were more yeah. on board. That's awesome. I mean, we love supportive parents out there. So shout out to all the parents who come out to support their players on the teams. And, you know, hey, it's you guys as an audience that really make everything here kind of run around and give us something to look forward to at the every week. So can't express that appreciation enough. And, of course, thank you for tuning in today. That is going to be the end of our broadcast here on the desk course. Thanks, Ben, for joining me out here for an interview. And we still have plenty more action coming up for the remainder of the week. We will be having our stream tomorrow uh, with four different games being played. So make sure you tune in for that one. No streams the rest of the week after that, though. We will be attending that game, Mason Land. So make sure you're following Shenandoah Esports on socials to keep updated on all of those scores. It's been a great night, everybody. And we're looking forward to seeing you again tomorrow.
with a 3.23 left in this one. Yeah, Stella were, were able to pop it right over Eliminathan's head there to bench on the board and look at this play. It was a huge pass down to Mango. They found him perfectly in the air. You're expecting your next land up. That's it. Regain that one goal lead. Yeah, and really just a great job right there from Stellar to, to recognize Lemonade kind of being in like a, a bad... Weren't able to keep that ball close and found themselves playing right into the hands of Oz, guaranteeing Delaware an insurance goal. Yeah, really unfortunate. And you'll notice right here, because it was so early on, Eliminate didn't have enough boost to actually power that shot over Scooter. And same thing with Mango, he wasn't able to get that room to work. And oh my, they will deliver. That's a second for Eliminate. And take a look at the boost from the side of Delaware, two players with Shenandoah, and just like that, blink and you're missing. Shenandoah is ahead in this one. And this is exactly what they wanted. They got the hit off the kickoff. Kiazi may not have gotten that last touch, but it was enough to give Shenandoah the lead once again, and that is his second of the match. It was a pass to himself, right? He yeah. got the hit first down midfield, and a lucky bounce. Of course, far as I go to say that, good old Casper Curse once again, and we are back to square one. Eight goals in this game, four to four, with Watch a this. just phenomenal, Watch this. phenomenal oh, okay. flip reset. <laughs> I mean, yeah, not yeah. much, not much Mango could have done there. Phenomenal flip reset. Critical error as Mango gets it to one point. Yeah, and just like that, the breath of life is back in Shenandoah. I'm gonna say box out as a, as like a basketball term, but quite literally just boxed out uh, whoever that was in the air, and, and it leads to a goal. Get that first goal in for Shenandoah, and for the very first time, they will be in the first place. So I think that's the third instance of a casting curse from both of us. It's just the defensive rotations from Shenandoah just seem to be slightly off, and it is costing them. Thankfully, it didn't cost them a goal. But. It goes so gosh dang speedy that <laughs> Shenandoah, they don't even have opportunity to react. Eliminathan was there, but if you're even a hair Look that pass and fake out uh, Kiazi on defense, and that is going to lead to another goal for Delaware. The Delaware, again, these shots on the good old cowboy and continue to do it. Shenandoah are able to walk back in and just look how much Cherry is pumping the heels into Ben. Eventually, he shall their own window. It's a nice Maywell placed at their back. First shatter almost online. Ben has to stay alive. It's another incredibly aggressive pin from our good friend Derby. Oh, yeah. That is going to be the big advantage that they need as this boxing begins. Oh, the two is hailed, the two earth shatters, and it will be Derby's hammer. Still, Woo! <laughs> I mean, Ben's going right in, want to give Derby a taste of her own medicine, and they're just frozen up into a popsicle. I mean, but will they be enough? Oh, no, the boop at the end. Ben had it in his sights, but ooh, four goal respectively is a ton of hope, and you'll notice how low Ben's health bar goes as a result, and as soon as that chip damage goes in, it's for players like Derby going on in. Yes, significantly more pressure, so he's going to have to be more careful about where he's playing, and as a result, UTD as a whole will have to back off.